What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. Let's rank the wedding gifts. Okay. <laughs> Starting right now. Uh, it's your boy, Schulte, by the way. I'm here with Akash saying we got Mark Gagna, Alex Media, White Media, uh, Dub the Truffle, <laughs> and Shifty in the building. We now, got Breitbart on the what? ones and twos. <laughs> we got what? We got Breitbart over there. <laughs> he is producing the audio Breitbart. and visual. <laughs> His holiday sweater. <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, I think it's important that we rank uh, the wedding gifts that you guys gave to me mm -hmm. uh, for this glorious day that I yes. gave to you but guys. Why, why do you got to rank the gifts? Why can't you just be grateful for everyone's <laughs> gifts? Why, why don't we start with Mark's gift? <laughs> Wait, what? Mark ruined his surprise. He wanted to give me and my wife a surprise. My wife. He wanted to give me and my wife a surprise. Love it. Love it. And um, so he messages me, right? Yeah. Knowing I'm with my fucking wife. Yeah. Right? And he goes, uh, hey, can you guys give me a code to get into your, your building? And I go, yeah, I'll just tell Emma to do it. And he goes, well, don't tell Emma. It's going to ruin the surprise. And it's like, okay, well, that's already ruined, right? <laughs> so I think that this is going to be like this big surprise. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, my, this is about to be the most amazing present if we're going through elaborate code switching oh my God. in order to get you in the building to sneak in and give the Why surprise. Why can't I just get a key to your building? Why can't I just go into your building with uh, a key? My building doesn't have a key. Grow up, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we got codes out here. It's all technology. Uh, if, you knew how to give the, if you knew how to give the code, then I could have just gone in. Yeah, but I don't understand technology, my boy. Okay. Call Shifty. Shifty knows how to get into my building. <laughs> I, I did, and he said, "Talk to Andrew." <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Mark's gift. This is this is Mark's. Uh, Mark got me um, a bottle of uh, uh, Dom Perignon champagne. Okay. Okay. Fancy, very okay. fancy. Fancy. The, the Lenny Kravitz edition. Oh, fancy. Uh, I think it uh, doesn't sound yeah, that fancy. No. Lenny Kravitz, to be Mark, honest. what does an American rock musician <laughs> know about champagne? It was, I only, tried, it was the only one with the box. I tried, dude. <laughs> it had the box. What Lenny the Kravitz. fuck is this? <laughs> I see the bottle of champagne. I'm like, whoa, Don Perry. This is probably some exclusive shit. And then I open it. It's Lenny Kravitz 2008. That's the best year. It's a great year. How do you know that? Just, it just sounds like it's a great what year. What the fuck does Lenny Kravitz <laughs> yeah, have to do with champagne? No, it is. That's the best vintage. No, 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 no. It's the light up bottle, right? No, no, no. That's the Loomis. I couldn't get that. Oh, you didn't tacky. get the light up club no, bottle. <laughs> I was gonna get the 2012. That was Don't just do a that. regular I was without gonna... the box. Yeah, but yeah. I couldn't get 2012 because it's the worst vintage. The 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 flowers were nice. The flowers are very nice, <laughs> but super anticlimactic. Give me the key to the, the building. Like, you can just give me that when I come to work, and I'd be well, like, yeah, they got expect... us a bottle of it champagne. It wasn't for you. It was for your girl. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. Y'all are my friends. <laughs> you got a lot of gifts already. I got I got well, I got one great gift. No, let's go through the gifts. Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, oh. let's let's go through the gifts. This is great. This what is... were you expecting? What did you want to be in your apartment? This is Miles' gift. Honestly, I was gonna give you. Cookie back. That was going to be your gift. I this was going to is... put cookie back in your apartment. <laughs> See, this is thoughtful. I, actually, let's start with the best. The best gift so far came from Vala. Mm. Vala edited this like whole video that yeah. we played at the wedding. Yep. Right. Amazing. And he had interviewed all like my friends and yep. Emma's friends and our parents and everything yep. like that. And then he like compiled this video and it was just really amazing. It was a great job using your skills. And it's going to be better when you watch it if you watch it on your own. Yeah. Because the, at first of all, the audience stuff is going to be better, but then it's like a private thing you can what share you with each other. Oh, I haven't. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to watch that whole thing. Beautiful. Miles, you did something with pictures. Oh, cuz you had the disposable camera. Disposable camera and then there's a let there's like a note here that I don't know if I want to read. Will it be uh, embarrassing to you? I would read it. Uh, you can read it. Okay. <laughs> okay okay to the couple who has it all but needs nothing more than one another oh that was beautiful that is nice that is dude nice. That's nice. thank That's you nice. he just did the guns up yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> white media uh, <laughs> thank you for making me uh something at your wedding out of love and laughter Oh, cry. That's your way. Uh, thank you for sharing your day and your people with me. They're both unforgettable. I'm so grateful for both of you and look forward to watching and participating in the movie that is your love and life. Oh, that's Aww. beautiful. Yeah. And then really cool pictures, which I'll look at later yep. since we have to do this podcast. Correct. Um, Why don't you read my note? I gave you a note. I did. You did give me a note. It was a great note. It was very sweet. It was very sweet. Thank you, your wife. I wrote it. <laughs> you did not write it. I looked at the she handwriting. Have, I look she, at your no, handwriting all the time. I wrote it literally, but I told her what to write. Sure. Anyway. Um, okay, let's look at the other guests. Alex dropped some cash, which I thought was very generous. Alex came through with a good amount. Mm. Alex came through with a very yeah, good amount. Right, right. I, I saw that wedding. I was like, he's going to need this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were right. Yeah. <laughs> you were very right. Uh, Miles comes through. Uh, Chifty, nothing, but I know how much he makes, so that's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> F I got a shout out to F. F.A. F.A. 
F.A. came through with FA very generous. Uh, now let's go to the people who hasn't given me shit yet. Mm -hmm. Dove. What's up? <laughs> wow. You want me Dove. to list the reasons why I haven't gotten it? Wow, you got reasons. Wow. Yeah, prepping. He got reasons. That's his gift to let you. Me, let me Excuses. Let me <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Dove. Go, Dove, tell us why. Because you had more than enough time to go spearfishing in the fucking Bahamas. Oh. Where's my gift? Did I have more than enough time Where's to prepare my gift? a ceremony as your uh, rabbi? And how much did you save not actually getting a real fucking priest you rabbi really think to come that in you there? We saved money not getting... You think a priest was going to do my wedding? Also, <laughs> do you have to pay the priest? That's Maybe you gotta God. put them up. Uh, Maybe yeah, you gotta, like, like I, hey, we, let's fee. say one thing real quick. Dove killed it yeah. as oh, a wedding official. It. He killed Fucking it. And using most of our material. Hello, welcome to Flavor 2. <laughs> 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 like, you know, like, half of the jokes are our jokes. He made Charlotte yeah. do all the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. he brought Charlotte up. Charlotte ends up doing the majority of the work. What? Typical yeah. Jew yeah. using a black man in hip hop <laughs> for success. <laughs> <laughs> that was my little surprise. Then. You, Lior Cohen ass. Lior Cohen. Another thing, then yeah. we could just jump right to it. You fucking crashed. Well, you brought your honeymoon to my honeymoon. And okay. then what did I get you the day after you got there? A fucking yacht on Christmas Day. So I got you a wedding gift and you a boat. You didn't get me a yacht. Did you, did you pay for the boat? You literally you didn't gifted get me the, the guy hey, from the boat. Hey, do you think he paid for the boat? He, exactly. <laughs> like, what is that, bro? Yeah, time and effort. Thank oh, you. Uh, time and effort being friends yeah. with your friends. But they like me. Thank you, Orin. Unbelievable, this guy. Unbelievable, dude. Put a dollar amount on everything. That's like the like NBA jam that Akash got us. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's just yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. 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 You know what, though? No, great gift, yo. <laughs> you ate. By the no, way, you, you know what Andrew should... brought to the boat? Can I just say what you brought to the boat? Yeah. Andrew brought to the boat the A nice free... glass of fucking champagne. No, a bottle and of champagne. It wasn't the Kid Rock Don Perignon version. It was real champagne with a guy with a French fucking name. Lenny and Kravitz in Perrier Jouet, which you got for free free from the hotel that I reached out to get you a hookup on. Shout out Pablo. So <laughs> I'm just making you money on he your just, honeymoon. He you just cheap. did his job. Does the he, same thing yeah, he does, does, does he every think day. that this is not what he's supposed to do? I does he think that clock. this is not the I job? I was off oh, the man. clock. Okay. The point is, where's the gift? Okay. I'm reading like was white people weddings. being a rabbi? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Was hold up. The, being a rabbi is not a gift. Hold up. White people weddings. So you, you do for your friends. You have a year to give the person a gift. It says it right there on that list. Vogue.com. And well, I just have to let you know something. What is my my wife? I'm just gonna let you know. What this is my now? wife? Technically, according to your rules. Yeah, Ashkenaz. Dude. She's soup soup Jew. She's Jew. Okay. According wow. according to your rules. So when do the Jews give the gift? Uh, then, dude, Andrew's money, babies are gonna be no, more Jewish right, than yours. One hundred percent. They would be. You're marrying, a, you're marrying a shiks. Yeah, you're marrying a shiks. Yeah, I did. Sure. But I would normally, in that case, give money. But then it's like almost like, do I just tell the business manager to reroute what you, what you pay me back to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. When my girl gets me something, you think it comes from her? <laughs> I'm buying me the thing. We all know this. It's a recycling oh, of money. Yeah. Well, I could say this. I give her the money. Oh, she man. buys me a gift. I go, babe, thank you so much. Oh, that's yeah. good. For saving me the time yeah. going on <laughs> Essence.com and buying a gift. You're right. So Essence. I'm going to buy her a wedding Whatever gift. you buy the clothes. With Essence, right? <laughs> Essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Triple S's. Yeah. So because uh, you got one fire gift that's on your wrist right there? No, no. We're not going to talk about the gifts. I'm gonna get, deflecting, I'm gonna gift. my man. We're, deflecting. We're talking about where's your gift? Were it's you coming. just going to not get a gift? No, no, no. It's coming. Classless, it's, this guy. It's coming. Yeah. What kind of piece Classless, of shit? Classless, this guy. What oh, my friend's, my friend's friend brought you on a boat <laughs> in Miami. That's my gift. Oh, shout man. out Omer Pura Vida. That's yeah, shout out Omer. Yeah, we yeah. paid for that fucking boat with all the times we go to Pura Vida. Saved your life, Andrew. Andrew giving him shout outs right now, so it's not really that count? free. Yeah. You know? <laughs> shout out Orin Alexander, best best real estate. <laughs> shout out Orin, you useless. Okay. <laughs> what did Akash get you? Yeah, what did Akash get me? Nothing. Open up your Coinbase wallet right now. Oh my God, no. Ooh, that was good because he set that up today. Oh, yeah. So I knew you would never buy any of these altcoins on your own. So a few months ago, I made a, an investment on both of our behalfs. It's up 40%. I just sent you half the money. Yeah. This guy's a beast. Oh, that was good. Yeah. That was fucking good, bro. I thought I had, I thought I had 
Yeah, I got some rocks. Yo, you ain't shit, bro. You ain't, and it's your done. speech was nothing compared to Akash's. <laughs> it's a little goofy ass jokes. <laughs> oh, we're all here. I'm Rabbi Dolph. I'm Rabbi Dolph. I can't believe you heard me. I'm Rabbi Dolph. You're crying Eating the entire fucking time. shellfish the entire oh goddamn God. time with the sushi. You're oh crying. Fuck you. You're crying. Get a new shirt. That's what we have to do. New wardrobe for Dove. Buy yourself that. Oh, my God. Okay? Where my tell you this guy else. still doesn't even have an apartment. He's not committed to nothing. <laughs> yeah. This guy's still living in a hotel. <laughs> He's okay? deflecting. Uh, I'm not deflecting. I made you thousands. You think it's because no woman wants to commit to him that he doesn't want to commit Whoa. to anything else? <laughs> Yo, real talk. Why should a woman commit to you if you can't commit to yourself? Ooh. Oh, oh shit, bro. That's bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Just keep, bam, keep bam, coming. Bam. Keep coming. I can't believe I it. I have the no receipts, gift. my friend. I'll Hold tell you up. when to sell. Hey, you have a receipt for my gift, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, was there anybody else? Oh yeah, and then obviously the big gift. Um, I got one for Emma too. That's at that. Oh, sorry, we'll believe her. Yeah, name. you can use it. They too. know now. It's at the house. So Damn, boy, this off. guy went for it, and I like how you got me a gift for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That <laughs> that is class. Of course. Hey, buddy, come on. Because you doing? know me. I know you exactly. And what counts as a good gift? To, to you? No, I Say think what? I got. What counts it. as a good gift? A gift that she can't use at all. Okay. <laughs> this is a private account she knows nothing about. Offshore. <laughs> 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 we got offshore accounts, baby. I'm giving all my money to Akash. We're going all in on NFTs and crypto, and they Hell can't yeah, take dog. nothing from us. NFTs are mad straight, right? bro. We're gonna hit sixty, divorce our wives. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get that house together. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Get together. Finally, yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Um, but no, I got to give a huge shout out to the motherfucking boss of all bosses, the best present without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking Rogan, Rogan, Rogan. Uh, it comes to the to the, uh, the house and then uh, hands me this box, and I know it's a fucking Rolex from the box. Just the weight, or the what? weight, and the shape, and everything like that. And it was wrapped, but I don't want to say it because that's presumptuous. Yeah, you know. So I can't be like, oh my god, you did you actually do this? And then it turns out to be some champagne or something like that, right? So like, it's like a mini bottle of champagne, you know? And, uh, bro, I, I remember, like, I, I looked at the gift when I first saw the champagne, the flower, and then I went into the room, like, ah, he hit something in my room. Like, I thought there was going to be... I thought there was going to be flew more to New York that day. I, thought I flew to New York for the day to set it up. He's a bad guy, right? He's a bad guy. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> Me? Did you fly back? Yeah. Right after? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. flew to... You can't ship him nah, champagne? He did, that, he did that for Delta points. Of course also he did it points. for Delta yeah, points. Another Delta points. Like, play. we don't know this but I could have just gone already? to Atlanta and gone home. About I could have just guy? gone to Atlanta. Are you platinum? Diamond, no, bro. He's diamond. diamond. He's diamond. 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 Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. I can gift you status. He got you. He got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got you status. I got you a gift. He got himself status for your wedding. But I wanted to set it up. I didn't want to Book set a random layovers person. layovers on the way over to get the fucking <laughs> piece segments fucking he needed. Shit. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Lenny Kravitz is cool. He's got a hot daughter. You know what? Music. I asked both these guys for help with your gift, and they gave me nothing. Useless. He gave me a pretty good idea, actually. But, uh, well, uh, use it. Yeah, yeah. I was almost upset at Akash. Akash came to me. He was like, "Listen, I'm thinking about getting your girl knives for your wedding," and I'm just like, "I know this motherfucker not gonna get my girl some shit. I know that this motherfucker is not gonna get but just you my you girl like a gift. gift. You say, say what? You like? I don't I like be gifts, saying but... shit. <laughs> y'all don't know me already. Like y'all don't know me in this podcast already. I just be saying shit and flippity oh, flopping on it. You know what I mean? We moving back to Miami too. Hey, hey, thought, hey, that, hey thank hey, God, bro. Yeah, I went on one fucking boat. And it was quite convincing down there. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, hey, that's a gift to me, Dove. That's a gift to me. I got you. Uh, right. But yeah, Rogan came through. And he, he gives me the, the box and he uh, and I grab the box and then before I can take it away from him, he's holding onto it. He goes, uh, I don't know your wife. This is for you. Fire. And I was like, that's what the fuck I'm talking that's about. Fire. That's what the fuck I'm talking that's about. Fire. Do you know what I mean? Why are you going to give us some shit we could share? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then we went down there. If it's there. a Rolex, you can't share it, actually. No, I, I actually looked into it. You can't adjust it that much uh, to share okay. it, which makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, Because we did share that sub. That's yours now, babe. That's what I said. Mm. That's yours. Nah, that shit is fire. Nah, that shit is absolutely fire. I mean, it would be nice if it was the fucking Lenny Kravitz edition or something. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe if he splurged and got me the fucking Lenny Kravitz Daytona, that'd be pretty fucking nice. You know who got you the best gift in this room? Hmm. He made an investment for me also. Yeah. Which is good. Hmm. We'll uh, see if that pans out to something. You guys gave me cash. Uh, rest of y'all ain't give me shit. So. I wrote a card. I wrote a card. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Probably in a recycling bin somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Motherfucker gave me a card, no pictures. You know what I mean? Didn't even give me the disposable camera pictures. Son, yo, this is this is fucking beautiful though, Miles. Thank you so much Thank for you. giving me more grainy pictures than exists on our phone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, this is actually really beautiful. Thank you. Oh, this is really sweet. I'm gonna look through all those and like have them. But uh in all seriousness, uh what an awesome fucking uh, day a wedding is. I, I did not understand it until I, know. I had one. And I, I feel like a complete narcissist in saying that. But like... No, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't get it. Because it's not, it's not even just all the attention. It's all the people you love mm. and she loves in one place together. Yeah. And you're all just loving each other. Yeah. It's fucking... It's incredible, man. Yeah. It, it is the best day of your life until you have kids, I assume. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. 100%. Like, it was crazy, dude. Like... Yeah, and everything that you guys said about it came true, and I tried to do things that you guys advised. Like, uh, I remember Mark said something. He's like, "Yo, just like take a moment to like have with your girl." And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was you that said this, or that or you said this. They're like, when you're up there doing the vows, look out. You was it you that said that? that? Yeah. yeah, and I and I made sure that I did that, and yeah. it's really cool because it's all the people that you love in your life, right? You're looking at them. Notice you are behind me. All the people that you love in your life, you're looking at them without the person that you hate the most because he just fucking sat there sucking up oxygen for no fucking reason. Are you going to get him a gift? Are you going to? Bro, I regret this ever fucking going. Guy, this I regret fucking, Rabbi. I regret this, this guy. Everything. Unbelievable, this guy. Unbelievable. I made this oh my guy God. cry. Hello, through. hello, and welcome to Flagrant Two. Best that was his biggest banger, ever. dog. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that was his banger. That was his banger, right? No, no. He did. You have other shit? I had other bangers. Did I have other bangers? You had some bangers, can, dude. Can Akash talk about me right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did great. He a great tan. I'll tell you. No, no he did great. He Real really talk, nice Dove did it. He did great job. No, he did awesome. He did a he did fucking. Awesome. It was really well done. Andrew's vows. Oof. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I see you do comedy at an incredibly high level. I have never been more impressed with you than, oh, that, shit. than that moment. Yeah. Well, I'll you, take that. Yeah, I he's want... taking away his bride's shine on, on her most <laughs> important day. That's what he did. Guys, <laughs> guys, there can only be one star. <laughs> you know hey, my man is a tough follow, There can only be one hey, star. Hey, you know he, hey, he went she, first. She buried the headliner. You know what I'm saying? She, she, she buried the headliner. She told me. She's like, I want you to go first. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> get the shovel. <laughs> Not to get buried. <laughs> no, no. I, I honestly, um, those were hard. Did you guys feel this way? Like, it was, it was very hard to write. Did you guys, I know that. We don't got to write it. But did you guys do something like uh, for each other or anything like that? Like, yeah. Like we had to do like notes before, like we gave them to each other at dinner. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And was that difficult for you to like sum up your entire love and relationship? Yeah, I didn't try to. I was like, there's too much to say. So like, here's just kind of how I feel right now. But like, just know that I'm not going to try to summarize. It's overwhelming. Yeah. He's like. I'm just not gonna you tap out, yeah, like, dude. How can you, like, bro? I, and I, I went through the same feeling, like, I, leading up to it. I mean, I was up to like three in the morning the fucking night before, like, w with a month out. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be able to write some vows. And my girl had written hers like way before, and she was like sharing them with like I think Dove and some other people, and they were like, "Yo, bro, you gotta come correct." Mm. And the last thing I want is on our wedding day, people to think that I don't love my girl when she's professing all this love to me. Yeah. Does, you know what I'm of saying? Course, like, there's yeah. a lot of like weight on the vows. Like yeah. if you come with some trash vows, Absolutely. it's like, what, what are you doing here? I am telling you that how much hard, I love bro. you yeah. and other people are watching it. So yeah. if I come with trash shit, not only are you going to be hurt, you're going to be more hurt because other people are going to be like, that shit was mid. Mm. Yeah. This guy talks for a living and that's what he came with. Mm. And mm. The, yeah. And then there's, there's also the pressure as you're a comedian, like everybody thinks you're going to try to be funny. And the yeah, last thing I want to do is be funny. Me. I just was like, let me just, yeah, tell her how I feel. And then, yeah, like, tell, I don't know, it was weird. Like, I really wanted to tell, like, my parents. It was beautiful, dude. Yeah. That, I, I just thought about what you said to your dad. Yeah. I almost teared up just now. Yeah. Man. It was fucking, uh, unbelievable. Everybody was crying. Was I know cool. Mark was crying. Mm -hmm. I was crying. My wife was crying. Alex retarded. He probably wasn't crying. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I got video of, of you and Alex uh, hair. Uh, you you know Alex Hare, the oh, guy yeah, who comes yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the fucking man. And yeah. uh, he, I got video of both of you guys dabbing a tear at oh. the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it was really like a grown man in it. Like, it was a little cold <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. that was a lot of sand. It was sand. We no, I, it was closer to the beach. <laughs> I'm very serious. I have it on tape. And 
at your funeral because I'm gonna outlive you. I'm gonna play that for everybody, <laughs> so they see who you really are, like the kind of guy you really are. Do you remember the last person that told me to go first, Stockoff? <laughs> I don't know what we're going for right now. Uh, my wife. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, if you tell me I'm going before you. Yeah. We're going to have to switch things You're up. You're going to have a spectacular death? Um, no, I'm going to... Fuck. <laughs> God yeah. damn, did I fuck that up, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wait, what? I was trying to say that you're making me compete, so now oh, I'm yeah. not going to die for yeah. you, but I just buried myself even deeper. Yeah. God, man, I think I lost it. This married life, bro. Yeah. Hey, you were in a blazer all of a sudden? Son, I'm grown, son. What happened? I'm yeah. fucking grown, bro. Oh, you bro. grown? I'm grown. I mean, I already did this joke when I first came in, but yeah, I'm grown. I know. You know? <laughs> I know. He's a grown up comedian, you know? Dressing like Mark grown up. comedians on stage. Yeah, you know? Fuck you. Know? you. Oh, oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. Bow, 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 bow. Oh. That, that's the one that's the one that went before you. That yeah. guy is, that guy went before you for sure. Bro, I told y'all I'm I'm on my uh, fake honeymoon because my girl got COVID and we had to meet Dev in Miami instead. <laughs> You and, took a uh, honeymoon? Say what? Wow. I know. The audacity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the audacity, dude. Yeah. The audacity. <laughs> Mark's been saving that yeah. for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so long. One year and seven days. Remember what when happened, he took his happened, honeymoon when you were living? Huh? Why do you need a honeymoon in the middle of a fucking pandemic? <laughs> and I didn't get a gift. Yeah, you did. What was it? I paid you the week you took off. Ooh. But I worked that week. Ooh. No, you didn't. Ooh. When did I come back? Sunday. I came back Wednesday. You didn't no, get you didn't. him a fucking wow. gift. I paid him. <laughs> <laughs> that, yuck. No, oh, you better. No, when you really come back? When you really come I back? I came back Wednesday. No. Yeah, I left Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Wedding Saturday. <laughs> That's what you know he does. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, this is good. This is good. I think we're here. Him. I think we're here. Yeah. This is good. This is good. <laughs> I said this to you earlier, yeah, yeah. but it's so funny. You'll see Andrew in real time, realize he's a piece of shit. Every once in a while. Like, you'll tell him what he did, and you'll be like, no, oh. there's no way. I I'm capable of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Tell, do you want me to tell you how I remember the events first, or should we have Mark say what really happened? <laughs> no, you, you go first. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. This is my, the way I looked at it, because I was about to ball out on Mark's wedding. Yeah, yeah. I remember like, I was, telling you. I was excited, too. I was like, I'm going to fucking make it rain on this little motherfucker. Like, I'm excited for yeah. him to get married, and he's doing all this good stuff. And then he just did, he was like, yeah, I'm being on Monday. And I was, and I was like, all right. And he goes, and he just doesn't show up Monday. No, no, on the flight or something like that. Sunday. Yeah, he texts me Sunday as I'm on the Dude, flight. I remember saying to him, I was yeah. like, yo, you want to split for Mark's gift? Like, let's go half, let's get him something nice. He was like, nah, I want to get him something. My woman knows from me. And it's like too much to take out of like an ATM. It's like, it's going to be like, Ooh. it's a whole thing. I don't want to travel with that much money. Like I got it. And I was like, God damn, what are you yeah. finna do? Yeah, well, it's going to do okay. some damage. Okay. <laughs> and then you texted me on the flight home as we're about to start work on this Netflix thing. Um, that you're the co-fucking creator of, <laughs> right? <laughs> that you're the co-creator of that you didn't tell yeah. your co-creator that you weren't going to show up for. Yeah. So uh, on Sunday night, and then I was like, hey, it ain't called Gagnon Saves America. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Don't you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then I, uh, and then he just said, yo, I'm actually going to go like hang out in a house or something. You're going to do like a honeymoon, like yeah. kind of mini moon or something yeah. like that. And then I was like, what the fuck? What did I really say? I said, why don't you just tell me? Yeah. So I was upset. Yeah. But in my mind, you didn't come in the whole week until the next week. <laughs> yeah, no. That's not what happened? No. You came it, when? It was Monday, Tuesday, and we flew back Wednesday. But you left earlier the week before. <clears throat> Thursday the week before. So Thursday to Wednesday, one week. Bang. But also, uh, that was when we started Netflix. <laughs> what do you mean? So technically, I was paid by Netflix for that week. <laughs> and me. <laughs> go, Mark, go! <laughs> no, this is nice. This is nice. No. <laughs> Yuck. No. His face when he realized shit is Oh my God. I feel oh. like a piece of shit. Yeah. I feel R. Mm. Dove, how do you feel Dove's right good. now? <laughs> and he <it> feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Was it really though? Was it really when yeah. you started? Yeah, that was the first. You week. can see the hurt. It was honestly, a you see the hurt in Mark right now, right? Why That's did you say this? I feel I've like been we saying... should zoom in on his face <laughs> if you can, <laughs> so you can see true pain in his eyes. Why did you tell me you this? You've been holding on to this, but hey, hey, we. But I've been to... telling you hey, forever. We... <laughs> I said I'm just gonna pay you for that week. I yeah. think I think we need to have another discussion in private, all of us, to just air oh. our grievances. Mm. Oh God, <laughs> I don't know. I feel now I feel so bad. But he didn't know. He uh, never had a wedding before, so he didn't know what it meant. But now he does. Now I know what it meant. But I still feel uh, fine with what you got. <laughs> Yo. I feel feel fine with what you got given your your information that you shared with me. But yeah. now that I know that Netflix was paying you, I don't feel good. <laughs> mm. 
So I will pay you what I agreed to pay you for you being an irresponsible scumbag. I was an irresponsible scumbag. That's from the heart, isn't it? <laughs> hey, you know what? Tell him you don't even want that gift. Uh, it's it's there's no emotion in it. There's no yeah, love behind should, it. Should I say that? Already, by the way, you t you took a mini moon, right? That's a sacrifice from a honeymoon. Yeah, right? that's hey. a little guy. For work. A, yo, a mini moon is a sacrifice. Yeah. Don't do this. Hey, hey, we're, just, hey, we're just getting hey, somewhere. Hey, we're just hey. healing. He's already doing our relationship hey, so, is just healing. Do you remember when we saved Dub from Hollywood? <laughs> remember when we did that with that Netflix special? Do you remember that? Do you remember yeah. that? Okay. Hey, what's oh, great? You'd be writing Pat Oswalt's IG posts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what a fucking loser Pat Oswald is. What an abject fucking loser that this guy is, right? Just, are, we, are we moving off of what a piece of shit I am? <laughs> Can we talk about somebody else's piece? Talking about comics that are a piece of shit. Bro, I didn't put that oh together, Mark. You should have brought that up to me. I didn't put that together. Oh my god! I gotta look at the amount of weeks. Mm. <laughs> That's okay. Did you look at it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a hundred percent. What was the week of your wedding? September fifth. He's hurt right now, dude. <laughs> nah, he we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Of this. September what? Fifth. Get fifth? to the bottom of his pain. No, you're off. You're off. <laughs> you're off by two weeks, but it was close. I thought September first was when we started. No, we we finished. It was ten weeks, is what we were paid by Netflix mm -hmm. for. And we went until the 14th or something like that of December. Mm. Mm. So I paid yourself? you for those two. You feel good about yourself right now? So much better. And <laughs> fuck you Wait, what? for right after my wedding making me you feel, feel bad. bad. How <laughs> dare you right after my wedding make me feel bad. Right I after gave... your wedding? It's been two weeks. What are you, a bitch's son, birthday? Son, can, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? <laughs> 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 I gotta give it to somebody. I gotta give it to somebody, bro. I thought you got me knives for my fucking birthday. I mean, my wedding. Go and feel like that. That was a great gift. Yeah, that was awesome. Akash was all before the podcast trying to like get into my account. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, I really thought that you felt so bad that I wasn't making any money on this crypto stuff that you were just gonna start forcing me oh, into yeah, making yeah. money on crypto. Well, I was like, did. this is really well, sweet. Did. I know. <laughs> and now that I see how much you can make, I'm like all in. <laughs> what a fucking loser to criticize crypto. Like, yeah. who, would, who would do that? Like, NFTs aren't gay. They are not gay. Yeah, they're the straightest. I'm yeah, telling you, they really are. NFTs Let's fuck bitches, yeah. dog. They, they do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. So what a piece of shit trying to make me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, my bad, dude. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> Son, I, that is fucked up. Oh, we man. went until what day? The 14th, right? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was the 14th. I don't want you to be right. I am right. <laughs> or the 12th or something like that. We I do think you hadn't officially started Netflix yet, but I don't know if they were paying you or not. You got It was for 10 weeks. So anything outside of that, I had to pay. Mm. Mm. So you got your fucking <clears throat> gift. And you were about to double up on me. What do you, what do you so mean? He gave you paid time off. On you. Time he, off, he, he acted bro. like a normal employer. That's what he said. His, his gift to you. <laughs> Listen, I ain't shit. I know that. But just tell me ahead of time. Oh, this man. is about principles. Technically, you gave me a bigger gift then. Hey, oh, he's shit, up. Man. He's up, bro. He's up, dog. Only because I told him what I was going to splurge. <laughs> he didn't tell you how much. You know what I, mean? I, I was like, yo, it's got to be big. I'm going to be honest. He was doing so much. I was like, oh, I do as much as I was going to. Andrew going to pay him so fucking much. <laughs> How do I end up being the fucking asshole every time? That's what we always want to know. <laughs> is it me? <laughs> Guys. Now, nah, you got a blazer now. Is it me? Nah, yeah, bla I'm blazer, a blazer Schultz is different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, blazer you're Schultz is different. On, son. He wore that blazer on our double date. Which he invited himself on. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because the Infamous Tour has a few shows left. The Infamous Tour is officially ending in April. Keep that in mind. So these are the last shows of the Infamous Tour. We are not adding any more in North America at all. These are the times you get to see it. We will be in Portland this weekend and Seattle. Okay, we added a late show in Portland, late show in Seattle. A few tickets left for both of those shows. Those tickets are going to be going very soon, so do it immediately. Okay, then... Coming out to Oxnard. Oxnard's already sold out. Maybe we add more shows. I don't know. You guys let me know. But uh, then we're going to be up in Sacramento. A few tickets left for that show. Go get those immediately. Then Brea, California. Then Coachella, California. Then San Jose, California. And then we're coming up to Canada. They better not fuck with our capacity. As of now, they haven't. So we're going to do Winnipeg. Vancouver. Vancouver, we added another show. Then Calgary. And then, of course, we got the three shows in Toronto. All sold out. 
Toronto, y'all want another show? You let us know. Uh, then we got Birmingham, Alabama, New Orleans, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Montreal. We added a second show in Montreal. Go get that. Then New York City added a second one at Radio City Music Hall. And then finishing out Atlantic City. Those are the shows. We're coming to your city. Get those tickets right now. We're not adding anything else. This is it. This is it for the Infamous Tour. It's fucking done. Then we're going to drop that special, and then the rest is history. I love you. Akash Singh, uh, what do you got? Also, you can get those tickets at theandrewschultz.com. Akash Singh, tell them. Dallas, I'm coming home this weekend. Yeah. January 7th and 8th at Hyenas Comedy Club. Hurry up and buy your tickets before they sell out. January 27th through 29th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. February 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be in Richmond, VA at the Sandman Comedy Club. Canada, I'm coming to y'all. Vancouver Playhouse, March 11th. I'm going to be in Vancouver. Everyone in Surrey better bring their ass through, all you brown people. And uh, April April 1st and 2nd, I'm in Austin at the Vulcan Gas Company. But like I said before, we are going to be in Toronto at a bigger, better, better venue than before. Toronto Royal Theater, April 22nd and 23rd. Get your tickets at akashsing.com. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys. Let's take a break for a second because I got to make sure in the year 2022... The year of our Lord, 2022, you guys are bricked the fuck up and giving your girl exactly what she deserves. And ladies, if you're listening, I got to make sure that your man is giving you exactly what you deserve. And that's the hard dangling, okay? That's the spear. That right there is the pole, and you deserve it. And Blue Chew is going to give it to you. Simple as that. Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra Cialis. Well, this is the chew. This is the one that we pop. And this is the one that, you know what? We satisfy our ladies with. We're married men on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? The majority of us are. And that's because we chewing it up and chewing it out. BlueChew.com. Make sure you use that promo code flagrant. Hardest stick you ever have in your life. And your wife will be happy. And if she's not your wife yet, she will be. Make sure you do that. And you know what? You're going to get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. BlueChew.com. Promo code flagrant. Get it for free. $5 shipping. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, can I tell you hey, something? you were invited this- yourself to this honeymoon, man. Come no, no, on. No, opposite, my friend. Yo. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay. No, we said we were going to Miami before you. Stop it. We did. Stop. No, he's trying to make it for that Miami trip he didn't get to take <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> Which one is that? Oh, when, you oh, when the guy take... tried to take off work? He yeah. lost the love of his life. When the guy tried to take off work? <laughs> yeah. Mark, to go to what, if you do it, I support you. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, fuck him. <laughs> fuck this guy, bro. Yo, you're going to have more Jewish You want to know something good? I now it. I don't care. Now I'm fucking going balls to the wall. Yeah. You want to yeah, know some good go. shit? Oh, just now? We went on a little double date. My wife. Yeah, and then fire. Dove's uh, Christian, and uh, <laughs> let's go, <Yeah>. Dove. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. We need a camera right, that uh, can swivel so you can see the thing. Yo, Dove, they want us some real shit. This poor guy. This girl has Dove over. Dove gets to fuck her and then has to leave. That's the rule. Wow. What? Wait. Yeah. What? Explain. Explain more. I don't get it. I don't know. I thought I was going to get more of a reaction. Because yeah. that sounds like a gift. Oh, that's right. We're men. We don't yeah. want to cuddle. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Fuck. Jeez. Oh, no. The way that it was portrayed. The way it was portrayed that night when we were with the women was that a dove was getting the shitty end of the stick. Yeah, but no, you got to no, make I'm him good. think you want to hang out. Oh, God. You're a genius. Yeah. yeah. This guy's I'm, I'm really good. a fucking genius. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe depriving Dove of girl talk hurts him. But for most men, it's like, yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. You're oh, living the God. dream. Oh, Jesus. He fucking did it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we talk about Ratatouille or what? <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think that was Derek Poston's comment on his he apology say? post he said like come on ratatouille or some shit <laughs> like that i need to find it but yeah talk set it up so uh Patton oswald uh is this uh comedian he was very popular i think in like the maybe 90s 2000s he's still really popular with his with his people. demo is yeah. he yeah yeah and he'd be working all the time i yeah. didn't know that he was this popular he you know tj used to represent him really yeah for 17 years and then he left because fucking caa was hogging him down uh, yeah, shit. so this is a real loyal guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Super loyal guy. You know, yeah. you take a picture with you know one of your best friends and comedian, then mm. shit on him in the next post. Yeah, with like a set up picture. The most hilarious thing is the next picture 
if you can go to so it. So first yeah. you post a picture saying, with Dave Chappelle saying, I got to perform with one of my best friends or one of my, my oldest friends in comedy. Yeah. Uh, it, watching him perform in an arena, it's like a private one-on-one conversation, which is true. Yes, it's true. Dave is so fucking incredible at making a small crowd feel, a big crowd feel small. Yeah. And then uh, I guess he got a lot of comments. And then... And he was deleting post. all the comments on the original post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then do you want me just to read the whole thing that he put? Next? So, so then he posts another uh, post. And he has someone stage a picture <laughs> of him working on his apology or something, or maybe he's working on his set. I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's clearly in a green room and he's like got his hand <laughs> over his chin. Yeah. He's like, is this pensive enough? <laughs> Do I look thoughtful enough in this situation? Like, I'm sure they took this picture like 10 fucking times before they decide to post it, which is the most loser shit ever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he <laughs> posts a fucking <laughs> picture. And then does this long caption, and Mark, you can read the caption, but essentially apologizing for taking a picture with Dave Chappelle to his fans that are upset by it. Yeah. And then I think balances it quite well. Yeah. Where it basically says, like, this is a friend of mine. I'm not just gonna like stop being a friend of him because we disagree on something yeah. and I'm an ally, et cetera. And I thought that part was good. That like that part was good. Because it, it And he gave Dave, he's like, I don't think I don't agree with Dave, but I don't think he's done learning. And I feel guilty because I've cut off friends in the past I didn't agree with. And I think I might have made them more angry and hateful and closed minded. Yes. Which uh, is a valid ass point. I thought it was actually really yes. this part people are upset Correct. about. And I didn't think you should because I think this was what we want to give everybody. We yes. want to give everybody the, let's say, the ability to change. That's actual open mindedness. Yes. Yeah. 100%. <clears throat> what is shocking is that he felt like people cared that much about how Pat and Patton Oswald felt about the world. Like, I didn't know that there are human beings out there that are going, <laughs> What well, what does Pat Oswald think about this? Like, I, the guy from Mike and Molly. <laughs> what does the guy from Mike and Molly think about this? Like, how does he feel about trans exclusionary radical feminine? What does Mike and Molly side character, or is it Mike and Molly, or King is it Queen of whatever Queens. King and Queen fat, <laughs> fat people sitcom? What does fat people sitcom guy think about uh, radical feminism? And uh, what, what? Oh my God! If he doesn't post something soon oh about the fact that he was at a sold out show arena show <clears throat> with Dave Chappelle. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to support him. Yeah. God forbid. Like the level of fucking narcissism. And don't get me wrong. To be in this business, I get it. We're, we're, we all we, are, it. we all are narcissists. A hundred percent. I named a fucking Netflix special Schultz Saves America. <laughs> right? There's narcissism out there. Right? Yeah. And paid everybody there really well. <laughs> everybody got paid really well what they deserved. Okay? A lot of silence from the rest of the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but to, to feel like you need to address something that is a scandal only on your own Instagram page. Like, the world is not picking this up. Nobody <laughs> gives a flying fuck. You have to delete 10 comments and all of a sudden you're like, oh no, this is... This is big news. That level of narcissism, like that inability to see outside the world, that's some fucking weirdo shit, man. That's that weirdo Hollywood shit. You know what? That I saw this picture. And again, I, I like his general idea, his thought. Like, I'm not going to abandon my friend, no, even this, if I disagree with him. This is good. Him. Yeah. The, but I, was, I saw this and I was like, dude, I'm so thankful I'm not a part of that Hollywood world. Because I don't, it, it's either narcissism or... These fucking Hollywood guys aren't going to give me a job yeah. because I have a picture with a guy who's seen as anti-LGBT. And you see all the people in the comments, like the other Hollywood people can't get a job no more. Like Sharon Stone is in the yeah. comments. Like, I want to talk to him about this, but yeah. I guess he thinks I'm heckling or something yeah, like that. Something. Mm. And it's just like, it's all these people. The, the weird thing about Patton is I guess Patton has a fan base. Yeah, like he has his own thing. Niche fan base. So you would think that he doesn't have to like suckle off the tea to the industry yep. like a Sharon Stone does. Like like Sharon Stone exists off of the generosity of the industry. Like yeah. if directors like her, mm, right. she gets to be in movies. If they don't, she doesn't. Right. But it's not like Sharon Stone is in the movie and we're like, I got to drop everything and I got to go see this. Right. Like when The Rock is in a movie, motherfuckers show up. Plain right. and simple. Yeah. Like, the industry needs The Rock. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. it. He's in a Netflix movie. It's the biggest Netflix movie of all time. Boom. Yeah. Same with Kev. The industry needs Kev. Yeah. Mm. Kev don't need the industry. Yep. And I didn't know where Patton sat in that, but now you're telling me that he has his core fan base, so he doesn't need the industry. He doesn't yeah. need their acceptance. But maybe there's something in him that, like, he just needs them to go, hey, I like you. You're a good person. I think he's doing it to preserve his fan base. Yeah. That's they, another oh, thought I had. he's cultivated the fan base. His fan base that's, is probably pretty left. Yeah. Uh, oh, center. 
Uh, and they're like kind of wokey, kind of cucky. And so he is getting all these comments of people DMing him being like, yo, you're a piece of shit. I'm never coming to a show. I'm never buying another ticket, blah, blah, blah. And if his whole fan base does that, then that's where you're really fucked. Because yeah. he's doing tickets on the road. Like it looks like he's doing big venues. He's doing theaters? And imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big, big theater guy. Big. The stuff he posts on Instagram is to serve his fan base. So this is the first time he's getting a bunch of negative shit on uh, a post. So he's going that shit crazy. And he's like, oh, I need to go extra to respond. My only to. issue is the picture. That's what I... If he just wrote the note... Yeah. If so it, it's, yeah, go, go. If sorry, it was go. just... Sorry, no, I'm cutting you up. If it was just the note, I wouldn't mind. If, you know, people just fucking, hey, here's my note. Yeah. If this is too much. Writing the note and it's just... Uh, the hand over the mouth. Like, you know he did one take where he didn't have his hand over his mouth and he's like, no, it doesn't look like I'm like <laughs> toiling through these <laughs> ideas. And I'm, All right, let me try one more like... A, Ooh, that's really good right there. That inauthenticity, that's what it is. Like, why would anybody even take that picture? Yeah. Like taking the picture with Chappelle and then showing yourself on tour, like even that, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then showing yourself perform for all the people. Yeah, that's awesome. You get to be with the fucking greatest comic in the world and you get to perform in an arena. Great. Cool. Yeah. Some people are going to be upset at that because they don't like Chappelle. Right. But to really start <clears throat> to think, oh my God, I'll never be able to tour again if like these seven people who might not even be my fucking fans, they're just Chappelle haters and they're going to comment on anything that Chappelle is involved in Yeah. and hate on anything that Chappelle's involved in regardless of who they're with. Nah, bro. <laughs> Funny part I found was that he's doing handwriting. But then this is an IG post that he had yeah, to rewrite. Like, what he had is to going retype on? It. <laughs> I was thinking maybe it was like, you know, some of this probably photographer back there taking candidates and maybe he had one left over. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and be like, maybe he was like, ah, this is a picture that kind of works, whatever. It's just, let's just throw it up there. But then just do the note. Yeah, but don't you have like a level of self-awareness as a comedian where like, this is wildly corny. Like as a comedian, you would make fun of this. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. I was never a big Patton Oswalt fan, but I was asking a few comics about it. And I was, was he like good back in the day? And they're like, no, he was like really funny. That hey. was the perception <clears throat> and I got from guys that I respect. Yeah, he's, he's got a, he's a comics comic guy. They have a special him, Sarah Silverman, a couple other people called the Comedians of Comedy. They're like the comics comic, but he right. got big and he got industry love. The motherfucker was Ratatouille. Like yeah. that's paper. Yeah. So in his mind, even if this is probably to serve his fan base, but also Hollywood broke him the fuck off. He's huge in the voiceover space. Ah, Massive. Uh, but you know, he's consistently working like Agents of the Shield, like movies. He's so he's Eternals, a fixture. I think he was in. Oh yeah, and especially again oh. in voiceover. So you so can that's do a all lot. this is. This is yeah. how do I keep yes. on getting the roles in Hollywood? Career preservation. Oh okay, 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 okay. I'm just okay, surprised okay. he didn't see the backlash coming when he posted the picture. He was too caught up in the moment, maybe. I guess. Like, but I know, like, if you are in that and you understand, like, where you sit in the industry and who your audience is, I yeah. don't know why you would go out of your way to post a picture with someone that is seen yeah. as. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Especially if... after you shit all over Shane Gillis. Cause that's the thing. He was like he shitting didn't? all over Shane when that's Shane was going foul. through his thing, mm. and and it's funny. It's like and Shane reached out to him to like, hey, can we just talk about it? And then apparently his reaction was like, he needs to do a lot of work before we can even talk. Mm. And then all of a sudden, Yo, fuck you, dog. Yeah, yeah. It's super corny when the comics just shit on comics. Fuck you. You're but uh, shorter than me. Yeah. <laughs> when do you get off talking to Shane like that? Fam, that's the thing that I don't understand. Like when you see this, <laughs> like when you see especially a comic shit on on each other, it's like. There's only a certain amount of comedy clubs. Like, we're going to bump into each other. Yeah. Like, it's going to happen. Yeah. Not, And I'm not saying that there's going to be anything violent about this, but, like, you're going to have an awkward confrontation where yeah. you're going to have to at least explain the reason why you were shitting on a fellow comic, right? Yeah. And here we are shitting on a fellow comic. Yeah. And I have no problems. And I don't think I'll any of you guys have this. any problems yeah. having this conversation with yeah. Pat Oswald. I think Pat, and judging by what happened when Shane reached out to him, does have a problem having that conversation. Yes. So if you're just going to dump all over a comic who's going through some shit, right, because it gives you social media clout, that's really what it does. Yes. It's like your community starts to go, ooh, this is awesome. Yeah. You're not dumping on every single person that's ever said something offensive. You're not dumping on the random person. Right? Yeah. There's tons of people on the internet every single day that say offensive shit. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Why not dump on them? Oh, because you can't get clout. Yeah. Because you can't get passed on the back. Because Sharon Stone not going to comment on your shit, going, "Oh my God, how amazing are you?" As a comic, if you're not willing to have an unpopular opinion, that bothers me. I don't know that you're not not a comic or whatever, but it's whack. Yeah. Like you got to be willing to stand in an unpopular opinion, and if you're going to take the the PC choice on everything, and I don't need to talk to him, and then. This is good, but don't not talk to a comic who you think offended you, and you're like, "Hey, comic yeah. reaches out. Hey, can we have a conversation?" You say, "Fuck you." Yeah. That's so whack to me. Well, it's just because you don't want to handle the tough combo. And I was talking to Shane about it, and he was like, "Dude, I had to have a lot of those combos. 
Like I had like when I was he was when I was like younger in fucking comedy and I was just like bitter and upset and just talking shit about everybody and then yeah. eventually got some success. I had to meet those people that yeah. I had talked shit about. Yeah. And it was tough. Yeah. But I would fucking have them. Yeah. And it's important to have them. Yeah. You can't go around talking all this shit and then the second that you meet somebody, it's like all peaches and cream. Yeah. Like let's have fun. Let's be happy. I remember you said that about Charlemagne and it stuck with me, which is like that shit was fire. I had well, yeah, you say it better than me. No, nah, he was just like when Charlemagne meets people that he's talked shit about, yeah. he doesn't like shake their hand. Yeah. Not in a rude way. He goes, I can't act like I haven't talked shit about you. Yeah. So he was just like, he was like, they reach out and be like, nah, bro, I've, I, I forget exactly how he worded it. It wasn't disrespectful, but it was like, I would be phony yeah. if I'm going to be all like sweet and cordial with you knowing <clears throat> what I've said. Right. Mm. And because I would ask him advice about that shit. I'd be like, bro, what do you do when you like meet yeah. these people? It's a small world. Yeah. And he's like, you have to keep it a hundred. Yeah. Unless you didn't mean what you said. And if you didn't mean what you said, you're just shitting all over that man for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you say it publicly, thank God I wasn't, I mean, I guess I was probably more bitter because I wasn't in any public eye at all. But the shit when I was bitter and angry and the hate I was spewing, it's like, oh, thank God. I grew out of that before I got some level of success. Yes, you know yes, I mean? yes. Like that's what I'm hoping no with, with Patton's like apology thing, with him saying like, I wonder how many people I've pushed away or like that have dug their heels into their that. position. Great point. By me cutting them off. We should like, all take that in. And that's where I'm hoping like maybe someone like Shane that he cut off or was talking shit about, he looks back and goes, oh yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have reached oh, out to him. Oh, that's fair. He I does kind tried, of acknowledge. I him. Uh, so I'm hoping fair. like in the way that he's going to hope that Dave changes his, his point of view, I'm hoping that Patton changes his point of view. Ooh, that's a good perspective. Shane and it looked like out. from that second piece, I, people are criticizing him for kind of like throwing Dave under the bus in the second piece. I, I actually, don't think he did. Yeah, I don't think he did. Like, I do believe he has those beliefs, meaning like I think he's supportive of LGBT and he's an ally. Yeah. And I believe yeah. that that's real. I don't think he's necessarily putting that on. But I also believe he really fucking admires Dave Chappelle and thinks he's awesome at something that he loves, which is stand up. Right. And it's hard when you love something so much. Yeah. And you see somebody that you think is so good at it to not forgive their shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's almost like with your grandparents. It's like you love them so much. Mm -hmm. And I never had grandparents, but like, uh, I imagine you love them so much that you forgive that they might have some like bigoted views or some kind yeah. of shit, right? Yeah. I think you just change the, like where the butt goes in your perception of them. Like they're good, but they believe some fucked up things. Whereas Instead if it's some of, random person on the internet, like yeah. they're fucked up, but they might do something good every now and again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You give them that grace first. Yeah, exactly. And, and he knows Dave and he's known him for a long time. He's like, oh, Dave's a good guy and he's smart and he's like intelligent. Yeah. And he just happens to be wrong on this issue. Which that he also says in the note, I don't think he's done thinking, evolving, seeking. Yeah. He's a guy that does that. So he gives him credit as being a yeah. thoughtful guy. I think he gives Dave his flowers and he's like, look, I don't yeah. agree with him, but I'm not cutting him off for that. So in conclusion... Uh, you have the you have the right perspective because we're not going to talk about Ratatouille for this fucking long. <laughs> you have the right perspective. Uh, you did it in an incredibly corny way. Yeah. And hopefully uh, he continues to grow and he doesn't uh, shit on comics and uh, especially young ones yeah. who are going through a lot of turmoil in their career yeah. just for social media clout. I, I want Shane to reach back out and see how that's mm. taken now. Ooh. Ready to have that combo now, buddy? Ooh. That's a good idea. Yeah. Should we do it on flagrant too? <laughs> oh yeah, dog. <laughs> Talking about social media clown. <laughs> uh, what else, my boys? What else? What else? What else? Oh, I, I know something while we're talking about comedy that's very important to bring up right now. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. I just want to point out something. Um, I got my hair. I got my hair. This is very important. I have my hair. If any time in your life you've said, you know what? Andrew kind of looks good for his age. It's because I have my hair. That's the one qualifying factor. Fellas, if you have your hair, you can look good for your age. You can't look good for your age at bald unless you're black. But we're not talking about that. The point is, if you have your hair, you can look good for your age. Fellas, keep your hair. And right now, it's a choice. And you know how you're going to keep your hair? You're going to keep your hair. It keeps. Okay? Simple as that. I've been on for over a decade. Your boy should be bald. But keeps have my back. And it's going to have your back as well. And you know what? If you sign up right now at keeps.com, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant, you're going to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant to get your first month of keeps for free. Remember, two out of three men will experience some form of uh, hair loss by the time they're 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male power and baldness. And there are only two FDA approved medications that you can prevent your hair loss with and keeps offers them so 
Go there, get them, keep your hair, keep looking beautiful. Now let's get back to the show. In February, the 2nd of February, Hell we got yeah. a big let's comedy go. special drop in yeah. on these YouTube streets. Hell yeah. Bring back Apu. Let's go. Akash Singh oh, dropping hey. the first yeah. special. My Everybody right now, uh, make sure that you go subscribe to Akash Singh Comedy on YouTube so that you will be there for when the special drops and we're going to blow that motherfucker up. Okay? Let's do it. This is home team. We all watching it. You dropped a great trailer Thank yesterday. You, it was Thank absolutely you. awesome. You gave me some great fucking advice. Oh, you guys had a great job. You and Kevin Marcus put yep. up uh, your some great shit and Shout it was just awesome. Kev. People Thank really you. liked it or what? How did it feel? People really liked it. I got a lot of positive feedback from South Asians, which was dope. Yeah. People were like, yo, we need this. This yeah. is for the culture. Like dope shit that was being said. I'm so excited about it. I'm really proud of it. Yeah. I feel like I'm dropping it at the right time and like I'm just super excited and this good. year let's go. Good, good. 2022, good. let's go. Does it feel uh are you nervous at all? I'm nervous because there's still I feel like I have a good foundation. Yeah. But now you gotta elevate. You always yeah. gotta elevate. And that's yeah. a word that you use a lot. But like everything now, it's about taking this foundation and elevating in the next month. Yeah. So we got a month, we gotta do, you know, promo and all that. It's just like constant shit to do. Yeah. But I'm really excited to drop it. True. Can we watch the trailer real quick? Yeah, would love that. All right, guys, we're Absolutely. gonna watch the trailer. It's a minute long. We're watching it. Press play whenever you want, Mark. Because of a poo, I got made fun of in my childhood. Welcome to childhood, bitch. I ain't like these JC artists and you fucking know that. I listen to Lambert, then I mix it with that Kodak. Did a nine to five, rather die Mark. before I go back. I am tired five, number two, I'm not below that. People always say, name one thing a white male can't have. Okay, an opinion. <laughs> Native Americans are basically human Bitcoin. Like, I believe they exist. I never got my hands on one of them motherfuckers. I am number one and fuck whoever don't acknowledge it. I will say, the first few weeks, I just thought Me Too was all of us talking about stuff we would also do to be in a movie. <laughs> you were subject to be an Avenger? Good. Me too! Thank you, man. Very good. Mm. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I'm excited um, for this. It is, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, and it's interesting because it's like you've put out so much content on the internet. Yeah. So I'm curious, I'm curious, like, yeah, like where your mind is. This with is this. my yeah. first piece. First of all, shouts to Fuck Day, who's a big fan of the podcast for the, the song in the background. I swear I heard that song over a year ago and I was like, that's the title track for my first special. Oh, that's we sick. were in quarantine, so I couldn't film, but yeah. I was like, when I drop it, that's the fucking that's track. Fire. That's the one. That's fire. Uh, but yeah, I felt like, I want to drop this piece first for my first special because it's like, I used to complain about this to you that uh, people would tell me like, oh, Akash, you act black. You, t you don't act Indian. And I'd always be like, well, how do I act Indian? Yeah, yeah. And so I realized it's actually a cool opportunity for us to figure out our identity. Like this generation gets to decide what it is. And I saw a lot of stuff that was like kind of co-opting like black people's struggle that they actually had. And they actually have been fucked over systemically. And brown people are like, oh, yeah, but no, uh, Apu offends me. Or you mispronouncing my name offends uh, me. Or all this other shit. And it's like, yo, that's not how our parents raised us, dude. Yeah, our yeah. parents raised us to come over here and fucking dominate. And we're capable of that. And we like, we are killing it. But we got to own that. And that I want to be our identity. So I'm not saying I'm going to change it. Right. But I'm going to do whatever I can to fight against this kind of like victim mentality that does not apply to us, I don't think. Right. You're saying that like your circumstances are different than the black experience yeah, in America. Yeah, 100 percent. And I, that's my eyes have been open to that for sure. But like when right. we talk about white privilege, it's like, cool, that might exist. But you also are overlooking how privileged you are relative to your people to be in America. Right. Like we're the most privileged in our lives. Our parents would never, ever Compared complain. Compared to other Daisies, you're saying yeah, that are like in India, of, India, Pakistan. Indians, Pakistanis, Sri yeah. Lankans, people back home. Right, right. They don't, they would kill, literally kill somebody to be where we are. Right. So when we talk about white privilege, it's like, man, you got to be thankful for our privilege and take that and build something beautiful. I really look at our parents like they fucking sacrificed everything to come here. Language they didn't know, like they did it. And yeah. we're going to now complain? No, let's be thankful and let's build something fucking great. Dude. Right, right. And it is interesting about like like co-opting the the struggle of the people that you admire or like the place that you're that you think that you could you should reside within America. Right. Like it's almost like you see behavior of people that you want to be like. 
And then you yeah. replicate that behavior and look for those things within your culture. And I don't think that this is something that's specific to just Indians. I think that we all kind of do it. You're there like, is a way to act white in America, yeah, whether yeah. it's good or not. And there's a way to act, quote unquote, black in America. Mm -hmm. You have like, if I'm black, I like hip hop. I can dress this way. I'm this culture. It's all it's good. It's set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not necessarily good or bad. But for the rest of us, we kind of just got to pick a side. And then mm -hmm. when you pick that side, you're going to pick all the things that go with that side. Fair enough. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but yeah. to me, it's like, I want to be able to, let's figure out our identity. This is the generation that gets to do that. And that's fucking dope. But we got to make sure we set our kids and grandkids on the right path. Mm. So this is like an important, and the jokes aren't all about being Indian, yeah. but the theme is just like, privilege is not, we are privileged. Right. And right, so the right. jokes are, you know, there's one joke about a poo, obviously, but like overall the bits are just about everybody and this, this thing or that thing, society, whatever. But like, this is at the end of the day, a tone is, I want to set for my people or help them establish this identity. Yeah. And I'm really fucking excited about it and I'm proud of it. And like, I can't wait for it to drop. I just, I just think it's so exciting to like drop a piece. Yeah. Like, and I'm so excited for you for that because you know, when, when you're, when you're putting out clips or doing these things, right. They, they don't have the same gravity that like a, yeah. a special does, because what you're saying is like, these are the most profound thoughts that I've had yes. up to this point in my career or something yeah. like that. And then like organizing them as one thing. And also like having you have a little extra weight on it because you're carrying the perspective of a lot of people that look like you yeah. and, and you want, you are a thought leader in that space. Right. So this is like, you want this perspective and you hope that this perspective is like shared by all these people that, that have this similar life as you. Yeah. And finally you get to be like a voice for them. I don't know. It just seems yeah, so exciting. I mean, this, all the clips feel like clips. The special to me feels special. Yeah. This feels like a special and yeah, I'm yeah. using that word meaning it. Like I feel yeah. like this is special and let's, I'm really excited to put it out. And I was so much to y'all, everybody, but I even thought about this. There was a fucking episode where you and Alex had like an intervention with me. Yeah. Where yeah. you were like, yo, dog, you're one of the nicest. Like, get out of your fucking head. Yeah. And I didn't feel that way then, but now I do. Good. Now it's like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, I'm let's ready for this. This is my time. Let's go. Let's Good. fucking go. Oh, uh, that's great. So February 2nd, make sure everybody goes and let's blow this fucking thing up, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. You. Do Love you have you specific goals you. about with it for it? Or I have goals of like numbers of subscribers I want to hit. Uh, numbers of not necessarily number of tickets I want to hit, but I want to go from certain venues to certain venues. But mainly, my main goal is to just get this out to everybody, but my people. Yeah, I really want to see this. I yeah. really want everybody to see it, but I really, really want my people to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm excited, and I feel like it has that potential. And let's keep pumping it. And thank you guys for everything. Man. Yeah, man. Ah, yeah. oh, this is so cool. Yeah, it is so cool. Man. Um, all right, what else, guys? What else are we talking about? Yo, while we were talking about like wedding stuff and comedy stuff, yes, there were some comedians that were mad oh, yeah. that they didn't get invited to the wedding. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that do, is. Do you very want to true. address that? Um, I'm not mad they weren't. <laughs> uh, I had a great time. Oh, you know, man. I really had a great time. I know that uh, uh, our dear friend Bobby Lee uh, was a little bit perturbed that he uh, was not invited to the wedding. And, um, we had, we had, a, I thought, you know, I love Bobby. I genuinely love him. Right. And, um, but we had a lot of, we had a good amount of Asians. <laughs> we, had, we had Akash, we had Akash's wife, we had Ben Uyeda, we had yep. Ben Uyeda's girl. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and it was, <laughs> that was, a, I yeah, thought that a was lot. a lot. I think one of the catering guys was half too. Well, the we did have I mean, uh, sushi, sushi, but I made sure he was white because we okay, had so yeah, many yeah, Asians yeah, that were invited 100%. to the party and I wanted uh, there to be just an even balance mm -hmm. at the party. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and then Tim Dillon was talking about also with Joe Rogan. But here's the thing, like, so, like, the party is at like this beautiful piece of real estate and has delicious food. And I don't think Tim really understands those things. <laughs> so like he just doesn't understand. Tell the guy who sold subprime mortgage mortgages. Yeah, exactly. he gets like it. if this was at like a motel six that was renovated into like a hotel, <laughs> yeah. maybe that I, he would appreciate it or like some diner food or something like that. But clearly this guy doesn't understand fine cuisine and great real estate. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, so why would he even enjoy himself there? It's just not for him. Do you know? Yeah. Maybe if it was like done at like a, like a crypto, conference or something like that <laughs> he would and dominate dude. then then we would have him there yeah. we would be the if, efficient yeah yeah if it was in the metaverse he would have been invited. he'd be the guy and then we'd be the guys the second to the guys exactly yeah, yeah. exactly but um <laughs> but but no i just didn't think that you know there'd be any fun there but uh besides that yeah there was a lot of people upset that they couldn't get there you know Katy perry quite yeah, why, furious why yeah. wasn't why wasn't Katy perry invited um it just wasn't it just wasn't right yeah it just wasn't right i didn't think it was right for katie the rock 
Yeah. Was quite furious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was uh, throwing back that Terramana. Say again? He was throwing back that Terramana. He was, he was, I, he was getting he was shit-faced yeah. drunk yeah. because he was so sad what that he Neil wasn't Brennan? there. Why wasn't Neil Brennan invited? Skin, mostly his skin, <laughs> is very translucent. It was a lot of sun. I don't know yeah, to handle it. It's mostly outdoors, you know yeah. what I mean? Also, you know he got Omicron. Mm. Like, yeah, you yeah, know that he's sure. going to be contagious. Sure. It's well, 100%. Uh, I mean, I got Omicron from you guys this time. Do you so. think that you got it? Who got it first? No way. I, I sent you a negative test. Not everybody did that. I don't believe a, them tests, bro. I sent a PCR, not a rapid. I sent a PCR official ass oh, test. Oh, PCR is pretty legit. Yeah. A PCR is pretty legit. Because I um, knew I can't give this motherfucker COVID again. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been fucked up. Yeah, yeah. That would have absolutely been I was actually up. a little relieved I got it from y'all. I was like, all right, cool. Now fair it's enough. even? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, can I be honest with you? And I'll say it on this podcast. We might cut this out. Um, I'm never taking a COVID test again. Yeah, we're going to cut that out. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. We probably I won't. just want to let you guys know we might have cut this out or maybe there's bleeping going over my voice right yeah. now. I'm never taking a COVID test again. I have a cold from now on. <laughs> I'm done. Hey, what? what if you got to travel to a place that requires a negative test? I'm never taking... Wait, what? <laughs> no, you just get vax. They don't require a negative test, right? No, oh, when prices. you leave the country. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I'll do it for that. <laughs> so you'll do it if you have to. Yeah, I, 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 let me take this back. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not moving. I'm not budging one bit on this. I'm never taking a COVID test again unless I have to. Unless I have to do something I want, and then I'll immediately take yeah. it. But I'm not. I'm becoming more and more anti-vax. What if you have a sore throat? Yeah, you really are. Like, no. Really? Yeah, as soon as you put on that Rolex, you got real anti yeah. Yo, know, it's so funny, like what money will do and how it'll change your opinions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it looks to me it's about time for me to not get a booster. That's what it, looks, <laughs> it looks to me like the Dr. Malone or whatever his name had some really good points about the mRNA yeah. uh, monoclonal antibody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You it, Son, yeah, I'm with did. it. Well, my girl got COVID. I was stuffing ivermectin down every orifice. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We got to get this girl cleaned up so we could go to miami yeah 100 bro mad people that like d didn't know that my girl got covid they just knew that i hung out with dove in miami uh, it's they, like like comics like chris scopo came up to me and he was like hey dude the wedding looked great blah 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 and uh he was i just gotta ask you like uh like uh why was it like weird to go on, on your honeymoon with, with the, the guy that works with you? <laughs> like, like he didn't know how to say, why was Dove on your fucking honeymoon? Uh, and um, the answer is we were supposed to go to Brazil, but my girl got fucking COVID. So mm -hmm. we had to stay. Mm -hmm. And then we had a fire ass super spreader event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Fire. Was super spreader event of the Brazil? century. Son, Miami was absolutely amazing. Like better than I had I so much so fun. Much, dude. I truly I can't express <laughs> how mad I was when you sent those texts. Why? As I'm isolated with COVID, I could have been isolated in the sun in COVID in Miami. Yep, that's well, a good that's ass point. Dude. You had a fire ass place too. Yeah, um, bro. Yeah. I can't. But as soon as you said, "Why did we leave Miami?" I was like, "Yo, fuck this guy." Why did we leave Miami? Why? You. You. No, why? Why did we? You. It wasn't me. It was 100% you. I think it was Al. Son. No, I think it was Al. No, Al was like, I got a studio. I got a bill. Yeah, that was in the beginning. Then I got comfy. I was like, it's not so bad. <laughs> Al started the big pun riding around the cherry red one fit. Yeah. Yeah. That was good down there. No, why did we leave? I, hey, we can still go back, Doug. But why did we leave? You. You. Was it me? Yeah. Yes. Y'all be hating on me for no reason because I'm married. <laughs> it also got hot. Y'all be got hating hot. on me because I'm oh, married. Yeah, for what reason? Was, the weather was about to change. It, it was about real to hot. get like, oh, super real, real, real hot. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I saved y'all from that. Yeah. That's right. Remember when I saved y'all from how hot it was about yeah, to get? Yeah, from the cars crisp. with the air conditioning yeah. and the walking outside. <laughs> two blocks everywhere. Yeah. Oh, what a nightmare that would have been. We should have been in the 80 degree subway sweating our balls off. Yeah. That's what we should have been. Back to record prices for apartments in New York. I yeah. know, Perfect dude. Timing. We, God, I mean, my financial planning has been so horrible. I apologize to this guy. <laughs> like literally anything that I say about money outside of, outside of our business, any suggestion I have about money, just don't take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we moved to Miami at the height of the Miami real estate boom. Yeah. Top. Moved back to New York at the height of... Mm -hmm. Of the New York State, New York City real estate boom, mm -hmm. right? Like when we came back, almost impossible to find a place. Yeah, still impossible. <laughs> for some it, of it's us. very possible. You're yeah, choosing not to. For what I want. For what I want. 
Yeah. Dove lives under a bridge. Dove. He lives under a How fucking bridge. How are you so picky and everything? He's so yeah. jealous because yeah. I live. How are you saving all this money? I don't have a gift. I live with a sweet <laughs> and a nice piece of hotel shit. In the Buy Mark of a fucking wedding gift for <laughs> me. Yeah. Buy him a gift for me. Yes. I gave him and advice. Not an Hermes get... plate. Not an Hermes plate, please. You know the okay. Oh uh, fuck! I think I gave you an Hermes <laughs> plate. <laughs> <laughs> they got that idea from me too. No, do you know why I got you guys that plate? Yeah. I looked on a specific wedding gifts for. It's, it's not the whole bullshit. gift. I gave him something. <laughs> he gave, he and I, gave me. Yeah, I gave him nice. a different thing. A nice oh, thing. Okay. I gave him an investment, and then I. But the the plate. Uh, we looked at like the things that you should give for Indian weddings, mm. and money was the one that's normal. I had to explain to my girl like it's we're not being rude or lazy yeah, yeah. by giving money. It's customary in a right. lot of uh, cultures. And then the other was uh, they literally said like a plate or some so, something mm. like house furnishing gift. Oh. Is that complete bullshit? It was on like a Daisy website. Like I looked this up. I only give money, and I only know yeah. people who give money. The question is not what did you get them. It's how much are you giving? Yeah, them? right. Yeah, I was, it was actually it was a nice little nice little piece for the apartment. Nice. You know what I mean? You walk in, put your classy. keys down. It's classy. classy. It's classy. Somebody for comes sure. to the apartment. First thing they see is Hermes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? that's class. It's you know, saying that's the gift I've been getting people for years. I told them about them, and now that's your gift. Thank you. Oh, well, now it seems pretty funny. Now you get people gifts for years, and I have nothing. Because <laughs> they ran and out I of have plate. nothing. Yeah, they ran out of this plate, little trace. Right? I have absolutely nothing. His gift to you was the idea for my gift. I got an idea for a gift from Dove to me. You ready for this? Yeah. You pay for every Uber that we're in together for a year. Wow. wow that's a Whoa, lot. that's a gift. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his fucking accounting yeah. brain crunch those numbers real quick? He almost said maybe. He almost said maybe. <laughs> Here comes Vala has entered the chat. <laughs> oh, you mean Vala who sent uh, an invoice for the, uh, oh, the a... <laughs> Uber from the fucking hotel in Boston to the Celtics game, the $7 Uber <laughs> for the gift of Andrew getting us. Stop throwing everybody under the bus right now. <laughs> Hit him. What did he do? You mean the, the Uber you were going to invoice him, but I had a call because you guys trashed with hey, your Uber. Hey, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You had to wait outside for 20 years to learn about Uber because you're trash at right. Uber. Reality. We can't hear Vol right now, but he's can't. trashing Dove's Uber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. No, no, I'm no, no. Hey, you know what's funny about 482. that, though? And I'm going to throw you under the bus because you were in this much green to disrespect me. On the day I dropped my special, I Ubered from Santa Barbara to L.A. to catch our flight because it got moved. Vala hitches a ride. I asked you. Go didn't on, ask once. Didn't ask once. Didn't ask once. Hey, you want me to throw down some money? I asked him. I wouldn't have accepted it. He's like, nah, man. No, he's like, nah, bhai, don't worry about it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 If you text it, I take it back. But I don't I want to say anything. I asked in front of your wife. I'm going to ask my wife. Go ahead and ask her. She'd be remembering. I bet she will. be remembering too much shit I did wrong. This is probably <laughs> block something out finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm going to bet on your ass right now. <laughs> bet. Bet. <laughs> I Dove just wanted is, to Dove ask, is slick, you know? bro. We well, got this amazing. shit off Dove. Do you he's see that? Amazing. This was on Dove. Slipping and sliding. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not going to let it go, though. I have a oh, feeling no, no, it'll no, keep no, getting no, brought no. up. And the longer it takes, the more expensive it's got to be. Ooh. Oh, it's interest. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you're the interest, VIG. Right? <laughs> We're adding that? a VIG. I stay at a hotel <laughs> that's on the way from... Andrew's apartment to the I, office. I got a haymaker for him ready. And I just locked ready to go. Yeah, he doesn't no. even know. Pull it back. I'm just it waiting. Back. I'm just it waiting. Go. Go. It doesn't yeah, matter. Repeat, you don't point, know what Doug. you're about to step into. Go, go. Repeat about your point, the hotel Let's and start everything. It over. Go, 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 go. Repeat. Go, 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 go. This is beautiful. No, it's your turn. No, 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 no. I was admitting that I benefit from being in a hotel in between you and the studio. Oh, but, I thought you were talking shit. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. That apartment, no. though, that I did <laughs> he get you a fucking discount on, too. <laughs> Just that. By the way, he I, was like, I do you the favor of getting a hotel close to you. That's where you would go with it. Like, and then, because you had some heat for him, he was like, I fucked up. That was good. I that was good. Up. I that was the apartment up. that I got him into. <laughs> You know my, what's nice about friend. you, Dove, is yeah. you never. You didn't get us into this apartment. Yeah, we you know what's nice part. about you, Dove, is when you do it. something nice for somebody, you, you never, never hold it over their head. Never once. I really appreciate <laughs> never that about never you. Once. You, you never add a dollar value to every single fucking thing you did. You Remember never when I got you it. a Splenda? Remember when I got you so you didn't have to get out of your chair? Is that 37 cents yeah. worth? <laughs> I'll tell you something. No, but weaponizing good deeds is really a good way to be loved. <laughs> it's really the way to do it. Right. He's, he's doing Jewish Rain Man. He's and Jewish Rain Man. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's just numbers yeah. just going through his head. <laughs> he's just Wait, sitting there. Rain, oh, man, Rain oh. man was Jewish. <laughs> On the fucking boat, just brrr, how much is a yacht? I'm saving $6,000. Oh, man. <laughs> what a piece of fucking shit. Mm. Do you know that I took Dove's luggage back from my honeymoon what? to New York so he didn't have to carry his luggage to his Bahamas boat trip? 
Wow. <laughs> what is the cost of that? Mm. What is the cost of taking your fucking luggage back, lugging it with my wife, it's making lug in the making name, my dude. wife <laughs> yeah. lug this luggage? Okay. Wait, you made her lug it? Fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bags. <laughs> you know I mean? We all have bags. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Take the fifty dollars it costs, add a thousand dollars to that, yeah. and then I'll put them against my receipts for free boats, the discount on your hotel. Oh, God, you're so unlikable gifts. when you do this. Uh, Weaponizing gifts, like, can you I'm not be a friend? Can you not be a friend? Can you not be a friend? I'm a sweet boy. I'm being attacked. Can, I mean, like, can you not be yeah. a friend, yeah. bro? Yeah. It, Dove, it ruins it. Buddy. It ruins it, bro. You, you ruin it all. Mazel on the wedding, though. He doesn't do this to me as much as you, but the couple times he's done it, I've been like, just don't do anything for me. Yeah, exactly. Don't do anything, bro. Akash calls me fucking every day, yo. What am I getting Andrew for his wedding? Hey, like, hey thanks I for the help. Thought about yeah, it. thanks for the help on that, by the way, jackass. <laughs> yeah, you didn't do shit. What's jackass. your Coinbase wallet looking like? <laughs> right? My shit fire. I don't even know what this thing is. <laughs> spell. Spell token. Spell token. <laughs> I'm about to sell this shit. I'll tell you something I did you. <laughs> Let me sell this. How we sell this shit so we don't lose all our goddamn money? <laughs> You're going to sell soon. I'll tell you. All right, good. It should have gone I'm up gonna a little bit I'm going to give you the today. password. You no, do but I did, I did send a Venmo to Andrew for 200 bucks for, for giving bro, the bro, tip. Bro, 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 bro. I reversed it. Though. Wait, Without hold on, you hold telling on. me to do it, I what reversed it. Son, this guy is, I is unbelievable. It. This guy is unbelievable. <laughs> okay, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> I did cancel it. <laughs> it's unbelievable, oh, dude. You go, because I got it? a story for though, too. You it's go. Un- I, of course I'm I double down. Dude, dude. We're, we go to this nightclub afterwards that he'll try to find a way to make it like his. Con- no, no it's you like did it. Our That's guy, you. fucking Randy, who runs all oh, the nightlife in Boston, he always takes care of us. And he's just a fucking great guy. And um, and uh, shout out to his boy Ed who wasn't there, but you remember Ed yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. And um, probably at a fucking like uh, Asian brothel yeah. or something like that, getting his got fucking party, dick beat yo. into his belly button. <laughs> Shouts to Ed. <laughs> um, and and we go out and they just take care of us on fucking New Year's mm. bottles, this that the other. And we got a tip. I'm shit faced, right? We just did these four shows. We're doing great. I shit faced. I we got to tip the bottle waitress at least. It's the least we could do. And I tell Randy, I'm like, please stop it. Let us pay some. Let us at least take care of her. So I just say, Dove, can you just you know take care of the thing that you also benefited from? Blah blah blah. You know, give her hundred. I could give her two hundred. Give her two hundred. Right. The, the money hasn't even left his fingers, <laughs> and I get a notification on my phone for two hundred dollars demo. Not, not even like, not even like one seventy five, and like there's his little port. Like I'd like to contribute a little. Yeah. Like if it was for one seventy five, and like everybody contribute twenty five, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's one thing. Not even a contribution. I thought it was a work unbelievable. Expense. I thought it was a work expense. Also, did, a work expense. Did I? Are we at work? <laughs> are you trying at the to table? figure a waitress at a fucking nightclub? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a funny story. Yeah. Let's hear the story. Mark one drink, a- two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? What is it? All right, so the the girl was at the table. She was like serving everyone, really sweet lady. And Dove and her were just kind of hitting it off, like great chemistry. Yeah. And uh, and I think. Do you, oh, want, do you he, want the pics? No, no. He, he left. I had the pics from Derek Posen's girl, Sam. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> she was fake taking selfies and then just shooting oh, over her so shoulder. Funny, yeah. Yeah. Dove on the that's girl. That's so funny. Here's the insane part the girl and him. I won't, I won't. The girl and him, they go, all right, let's do Soul Cycle tomorrow. He's like giving her like crazy games. Like, yeah, we're going to go cycling tomorrow. It'll be great. Yeah. And then he leaves and goes, did anyone get her Instagram? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. no one talked to her. And he's like, I don't have her number. I don't have her Instagram. What am I going to do? Within seven seconds, finds her Instagram. Yeah. Goes through like the clubs, like who all the bottle girls are. Yeah. Goes through it. He, I'm like, all right, send me that. I want to see. He sends, he sends <laughs> yeah. it to me. Just to, just a vet, you know, because I don't want my boy to be doing something crazy. Stuff. Yeah. Good thing yeah, I just did. A vet. Good yeah. thing I did though, because I go through. She's dating a guy on the Patriots. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. Trifling, bro. Wow. And trifling. I stepped away. Stepped away. <laughs> stepped away. <laughs> stepped away. <laughs> like this guy got a coach. Sweet boy. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy got a fucking coach. Just stepped like away. I reversed like, the you, Venmo the, charge. No, 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 I just, reversed the it. The arrogance behind that. Like so, I stepped away. I was gonna steal her from the Patriots. <laughs> He's I, six, I, eight. I was good. The guy is six eight. Was, I, was, I had to step away. I didn't want to take the professional football player's girlfriend who also has a full time job. Step it up, buddy. <laughs> 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 like real talk. You maybe should step in. Save Shorty. Mm-hmm. Do you think you narrow? Do you think you like protected her identity by not saying who the player was? Because that yeah. guy is gonna know exactly who this girl is. Yeah. 
How many yeah. players, girls, do you think are bottle service girls? Probably a handful. All of them? Probably a handful. One hundred percent. You think yeah. they got jobs? Still? Where do you think they're meeting them? MIT? <laughs> <laughs> do you think the fucking Patriots are strolling on campus looking for smart bitches? You think they still got jobs? Say what? You think they still got jobs? These girls? Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. What do you think? I they, think they still do. They do it for the love of the game. Yeah. They do it for the love of the game, yeah. bro. Are, they are love they being married? out there, dog. Are they married? Say what? Are they married? Because that changes. No. No. Bro, oh, did, the, no, they still got jobs. They still got jobs. They still got yeah, jobs. Yeah, Dude, yeah. Dove has this weird flirting technique, which is the fucking craziest thing. He pretends to like like bump his nose into their cheeks when they're when they're talking like he'll like be talking then he'll like kind of like do that like almost like a retriever like, like a, a golden retriever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah like a kitten and then they'll be like oh sorry like that thing gets out of hand sometimes <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and and it's like your way of like breaking the touch barrier i noticed that you do this my cousin taught me that move <laughs> Oh, boy, that's real. No, I, that so I completely shit. made no. it up, and it ends up being fucking real. So he made it up with the nose to the cheek. It, no. It, it, he, I, I don't, is that not the best? So <laughs> Look at Alex's face right now. Dude, he got this. Is that real? This is a, bro, Dom, pulling up the girls like a fucking kitten. Yo. And just slowly. No, I don't do it with the nose. Is that not but, the most so, Jewish flirting technique ever? <laughs> Just is that a mating a signal? Nose That's a mating signal in your culture. Get yeah, closely to their ears. <laughs> Just get close to the ears. Oh my God. Face talking. Get close. <laughs> Tell me it works. <laughs> it isolates the two of you. My cousin yeah. been, taught me that. You've been in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin <laughs> taught me that. Holy shit. Also, do you think whispering is like some fucking nobody's ever heard <laughs> yeah, yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Not whispering, just face talking. Just get close. Oh, just violate yeah. a personal space. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. No, I got you. No, but I got you. No, but I got you. No, but I got you though. Yeah. Do it. Oh, <laughs> with an Epstein like charm. <laughs> oh, he's by, he's by <laughs> with a Epstein like charm. <laughs> he had no charm, that fucker. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe he said that. I got <laughs> Mamon Steen over here. Fucking. <laughs> I, my cousin taught me that. <laughs> okay. Oh fucking a. All right, guys. Um, what else? What else? <laughs> Please, what else? Absolutely. All right, guys. Listen up for a second. If you want to pay your student loans faster, tune your fucking ears into what I'm about to tell you. Okay? Because Ernest has some of the lowest rates, flexible payments, and in-house team that is ready to help. Okay? With Ernest, you could change your interest rate, get a lower monthly payment, and you never pay fees, not even late fees. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into a simple monthly payment. Okay? This is all you need to do with Ernest. It only takes two minutes to see what your new rate could be, and there's no credit impact. And right now, Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash flagrant. But remember, this is not available in all states. Check to see if it's available in yours. Because once again, you can get a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash flagrant to refinance your student loan. That's right. You're going to get paid $100 to save money. How crazy is that? Visit earnest.com slash flagrant for more details. Not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinancing made by Earnest Operations, LLC. NMLS number 1204917. California financing law license number 6054788. 535 Mission Street, San Francisco, California. 94105. Visit Ernest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. Now let's get back to the show. What else? What else we got? You want to talk about Jake Paul? Ooh. Son, this yes. guy. Yes. Okay, so interesting. Actually, can I give like a little hot take? I was telling you guys about this yesterday, but I want to drop this before the Jake Paul thing. Uh Floyd Mayweather hasn't paid Logan Paul for their fight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I told you guys this yesterday, but that shit was absolutely crazy. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was talking to Logan about it. I was like, are you serious? He was yeah, yeah, he hasn't fucking paid me. I guess we're going to have to sue him. And it sucks because once you go into the lawsuits, it's like the lawyers make all the money. Yeah, everybody's losing. Exactly. You could stretch that shit out forever, hmm. you know? And uh, he owes him probably between like 5 and $10 million. He has not paid him. It's been six months now. He was supposed to pay him within 90 days. And they have not paid him. And then apparently they cut a side deal hmm. with like Saudi Arabia and then one other place for like $10 million to stream the fight there. And never told Logan or their people about it. And it's just like, it sucks to, like, I'm the biggest Floyd Mayweather fan in the world. 
right? He is the greatest fighter of all time. I've said he's the greatest great of all time. But it sucks to see people become the people that they've always fought against or hated. Right. You know, like Floyd left Bob Arum because he was like, Bob Arum's not giving me the money I deserve. He's fucking me. Right. Bob Arum's an iconic uh, promoter in boxing. Right. And it's just like, and then you end up becoming that? Yeah. That's some bullshit, man. It's like, you know the fight generated money. Pay the guy pennies compared to what you're paying. Yeah. Like, why do that? What, what the fuck is going on? Are you embarrassed that you didn't finish him? Is this mm. like a power play? Is this a little bit of an ego move? Mm. But like, why are you becoming the guy that fighters all say and swear they're not going to be and they're going to come into the promotional business and revolutionize it and pay the fighters their fair share, et cetera, and then you're just going to be a scumbag to this guy? The last 30 days have been kind of embarrassing for Floyd. I don't know if you saw the thing oh, where he yeah, said like a Fendi outfit. Son, he dressed like Lil Durk's <laughs> girlfriend in Russia. That shit was crazy. <laughs> he said also like if I had trained for Logan at all, I'd have knocked him out in the first round. It's like all right, you ain't got to say that. Yeah, yeah, just do it. Yeah, just yeah. do it. And your all your whole ethos, all work is easy work. Yeah. So you didn't want to do the easy work. Yeah. Like you're the, you're the guy who the, we respect above all else. You work the fucking hardest. Yeah. So now you're like I'm not even doing that, and that to me undermines your legacy more than carrying him for eight rounds to have a fun fight. Yeah. Just, you know, I just don't even address it. Yeah, it's just corny, man. And it makes me wonder, is like, are they going through real financial problems? Also, if I'm his fighter, Javante Davis, I'm like, yo, check the books, fam. Yeah. Like, yeah. please don't let this be another Don King situation where Don King was ripping off these fighters back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's just so sad. Like, that would be the biggest stain on his legacy if at the end of the day he ended up fucking over his fighters not only Logan, but like fucking over Travante and other people that was part of Mayweather promotions. Like, you want to talk about something that could be a stain? Like, not knocking out Logan Paul. People can forget about. We remember Floyd. He's 50 and 0 and never lost a fight, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. We don't care about these stupid uh, 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 exhibition bouts he was doing. He went and did one against some Japanese kid. Like, we don't give a fuck about that. Mm -hmm. But what could fuck up your legacy is if you end up being a scumbag to fighters. The people that you were swearing to protect. <clears throat> right. Right. The wheel that you were swearing to break. It's like some fucking uh, Targaryen da Daenerys shit. Yeah. It's like, do you just become the crazy yeah. people that you were trying to fight back against? Well, yeah. It's like yeah. that new uh, Matrix uh, movie that just came out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember. Remember Nairobi, uh, Jada? Yeah. His character yeah. in the early Matrices. She was this rebel. And in this one, she's this person pushing back against the rebels. Yeah. And it's like, you live long uh, enough to become the person that you hate. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, I think there's that Batman line, like, uh, what is it? Um, die here or live long enough to become a villain. I yeah, think. die here or live long enough to become a villain. And, <laughs> and uh, that was great fucking memory right there. There you go. Yeah, and uh, and it's like, is that what we're witnessing with, with Floyd? And that would stain his legacy. That would. I yeah. think that would fuck him up. His legacy as a fighter, you think, though? Like, is he not going to be one Just of the as greatest like a ever? man. Yeah, as a man, for like, sure. Dude, he got a, a couple things. Not he paying a great people? reputation as a man. Yeah, a couple, think... couple accusations could stain. He is the man's man. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's no. only going to matter to people like you who are big fans of him. Yeah, I think you're right. Because the rest of the general public. They don't give a fuck. fuck. Now, here's another thing I'm wondering. Do you think there's a certain part of society that like maybe doesn't like Logan yeah. and the Paul, Paul brothers? Yeah. And they actually are happy? That Floyd is fucking him over in this way is kind of hustling him. Maybe, but like you'd, it's like such an injustice that even the biggest hater is gonna be like, because don't most people go, yo, if, if I did something you didn't pay me, like I would be furious about yeah. this, especially shit. fighting. Yeah, so a guy the who risk kick is the shit that out of me. high. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it just feels so weird. It, yeah, it's like the scummiest thing, right? Like something just seems off because to not pay him at all. Or it's give, weird. give him it's a like gift. Give him like, <laughs> like if you, you have to be a Son. different level of scumbag. A nice bottle of champagne. I know some yeah, like, like, Shoot, get him the fuck. Yeah. But yeah, some just seems off the fact that he didn't pay him at all. And so I'm, I'm, what I think, my theory is that it didn't sell the way that he thought. Ooh. And so he's going to have to pay him out of pocket. Mm. And, and it's different when you're coming out of your pocket yeah. than when you're coming out of profits. Yeah. yeah. Pocket feels way yeah. harsher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you make crazy money, it's nice to like throw it around. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But I think they confirmed that it did sell well. I mean, no. maybe the business wasn't right. Like, you know, they kind of put this shit together pretty quick. Yeah, that's true.
Interesting. So there's something else there. Like I want to talk to Floyd, obviously. I wish I had connect with him like that to actually get his side, but it just feels wrong, bro. Like Yeah. Well, I don't know about the Saudi thing though. Like if you are able like if it was it Floyd's thing, like it was his production, his promotion that put it on. Yeah. yeah. So if they find other ways to monetize it. Yeah, I don't think you're as entitled to that. It's right. kind of fucked up, I guess, well, but like I, th- yeah. I I think based on their contract, it was a percentage of what the fight earned. Ah, okay. And then just not telling him about that money earned. Yeah. So if he was going to get 10% of yeah, the, everything kind of that came in mm. and you know Floyd gets the 100 million and he, or if 100 million comes in it's like Floyd gets the 90 and he gets a 10 it's like well fam where's my 1 million from that yeah. 10 million dollar yeah. deal you did in Saudi Arabia the, the like, contract would easily say like worldwide and if it was a carving out Saudi Arabia that'd be very clear yeah mm. Mm. yeah i don't know it just feels like scummy though but <sighs> one good thing i could say about floyd hairlines looking phenomenal starting you know? <laughs> phenomenal starting. and the beard like that beard is his great. surgery worked. was amazing it worked because he had plugs on his face and and his head top. yeah and it's not like because tory shit and maybe he was stressed with the whole megan thing but tory shit is gone but now floyd is just looking youthful yeah he looked like dr umar he needed that Logan Paul money. That's what it is. <laughs> He's like, I can't give this up, bro. That shit went all done. to Turkey, bro. <clears throat> yeah. Now, but, what do you guys think about the Jake Paul, uh, Dana White beef? Man, Thoughts on this? I asked once on this podcast, I was like, why do people hate Jake Paul? And then I got so much like, so many comments like, what do you mean? What you hate? And nobody had a real reason. I love this guy. This is so great. Okay, I've never break seen. Break it down. Break it down. Because he's playing the troll, but as a... Yeah, like an altruistic person. Yeah. Right. It's so fucking yeah. smart to say, hey, I don't like this guy. I'm going to troll this guy, but I'm going to do it as the good guy. Yeah. We see trolls as these pieces of shit who will insult your family and insult your whatever. And then he gets accused of being on steroids. And then he's like, have you seen this fat body? Like he's self-deprecating. He's uh, altruistic. He's like, he's doing it perfectly. I've never yeah. seen anybody troll this masterfully in my life. Yeah, he gets it. And I think the whole troll is a distraction, to be honest. Okay, that's what I was thinking too. What is your... Because like the pay-per-view numbers came out for his second fight with Tyron Woodley and they were saying 65,000 pay-per-view buys, yeah. which is significantly lower than the first one, which was about half a million. Mm-hmm. Right. Now he said there's still numbers to come in, but let's say it settles between 65 and 100. Still a big letdown. Yeah. Right? So how do you stop people from talking about that? Change the narrative. Give them something juicier to talk about. Mm. Right? Create yeah. another story, and now everybody's just talking about this Dana White story because Dana White actually responded. Mm-hmm. Now, I think Dana's thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna clobber him with these pay per view buys, right? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna expose him and say, oh, the jig is up." But the fact that he responded, now we're still in this discussion about Jake Paul versus the UFC instead of Jake Paul's floundering pay per view numbers. And the thing about Jake Paul is, and I think I've said this the whole time, is Jake Paul is not a uh, pay per view draw. He's a pay per view heel. Yes. Let me clarify. He's a massive draw as a heel, but a heel needs a face. There are certain people that were the draw as a face. Mike Tyson was a draw as a face. Mm -hmm. Roy Jones Jr. was a draw as a face, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Floyd Mayweather was not a draw as a face. Oscar De La Hoya was a draw as a face. Mm -hmm. And face and heel, these are like wrestling terms. Anybody listen right now, face is essentially the good guy. People want to see Jake get knocked out. And that is what he markets himself as. He is trolling masterfully. And everybody wants to see the troll get squashed, Mm -hmm. right? So, But you need to see somebody in there with him that you believe could knock him out. After that first fight, you don't believe Tyron could beat him. Nope. And we're not paying to see Jake knock people out yet. Even though he's doing it, that's not what we're paying for. Every time we're paying for Jake to be exposed. (laughs) Yeah. And he hasn't been exposed, so we keep on paying. Same thing with Floyd, talking shit to all these people. And we go watch him outbox all these guys. And the average fan would be like, this guy's fighting style is so boring, but I just want to see him get caught. <clears throat> right. The, the boxing uh, enthusiasts would love to see the fighting style because he was just masterful in his craft. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, fuck the craft. We want carnage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why UFC works. Yep. Yeah, there are craftsmen in the UFC. There's no fucking doubt. But a lot of times mm-hmm. looking at that shit, you see gashes of fucking blood coming down. You see people swinging wildly. It's a bar fight in a yeah. lot of these scenarios. Yeah. Nobody's tuning in for the jujitsu, mm-hmm. or very few people. Yeah, yeah, right. So he needs a fucking face. So of course this fight isn't going to do well. There's no face. Tommy yeah. Fury might have been that face. Tommy Fury, because you think he might have lost, so that might have. And then as soon as I found out he dropped out, I didn't care. Mm-hmm. It's over. He already beat this guy. It's not going to get better. Yep. And on short notice, Tyron's going to not figure it out. And you know what I mean? He had no time to train. Mm. Uh, you know my theory on what he's doing. Go. I think Jake wants out of fighting. He's dropped a little thing. Like after the first Tyron Woodley fight, he's like, yo, I'm going to take a break. Yeah. And then he took another fight with Tommy Fury. And then he 
he did that and he won and whatever. But like he's he's dropped the thing. You hear he says like basically he thinks he has brain damage. He's like I forget stuff that happened very recently. Yeah, slurred speech. I slurred speech like yeah. every hundredth word. Just all of a sudden it's slurred. Like I think he's thinking I'm getting long term damage doing this. I need to get the fuck out. Yeah. And the best way to do that is to have one last money fight. And the best way to do that is say you know what everybody wants to pay to see me lose. I'll just go to UFC where people are going to be positive I'll lose and they'll do the most buys. I'll get the mm. biggest numbers there mm. and I'll negotiate with Dana on my terms. I'll make the whole thing about how he doesn't pay and he doesn't give equal share and I'll demand that Yeah, and I'll set the precedent for future people and then I get the fuck out. And this is, I, th I think that's brilliant. Mm. I think this is where he's fucking up. Where? Because I think that if he was friend, if he was more friendly with Dana mm -hmm. and just kept the animosity between him and Jorge Masvidal and the fighters, mm. Dana might do the fight in UFC with UFC rules for the huge payday and just to see the guy get exposed, mm, right? Okay. But the fact that he's pissed off Dana so much that Dana's actually responding, Dana's like, I'm not going to put you on anywhere and you don't sell tickets? Now you've exposed yourself that you need my guys Ooh. to sell tickets? Mm. I ain't giving you my guys. Mm. You mm. can't do this yourself. But, you need... Go. Well, here's what he's also doing. He's driving a bit of a wedge between his guys and Dana by saying, hey, he doesn't take care of you. Whether Dana does or does not, I don't know. I don't know right. the numbers. But he's saying, this guy doesn't take care of you. Look how much I'll pay you. Yeah. I'll, I'll pay you an extra... Of how, well, you pay Tyron Woodley an extra million, 500000 500000 like if he knocked him out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, guaranteed him, I think, a million. For I'll take care of you. Yeah. I'll take care of you. This guy won't. You see him I give will. him the Rolex? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jake gave Tyron Rolex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been there. He's the Joe Rogan right now. Yeah, yeah real talk. <laughs> So yeah. I think he is still playing it it's smart. Maybe not as smart. Maybe the best way is to be friends with Dana. But he's being the heel and the good guy. And he's still driving a little wedge between the fighters and Dana. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I just wonder if he's like, I know the fighters know they want to make more money. But the fighters also benefit so much from being yeah. in the UFC, the system of the UFC, yeah. that like, I don't even know if they're that worried. Like, I think there's a certain few fighters that are like below pay-per-view draws, but above complete no names they're like we deserve to make some more right like like uh, sean o'malley's like sean o'malley's like hey i'm selling tickets but i'm still on this contract and i'm not getting paid a lot yeah i deserve more but once he's a pay-per-view draw he'll be getting more right so he's in that weird stage where he's more famous than his contract mm -hmm. he's outperformed his contract right. right right so now it just benefits the ufc right but that's why you sign contracts but what about the guys who are the stars who don't necessarily need the biosphere of the USC promotion. I don't anymore. see them complaining. Jorge Masvidal, I don't see complaining. I don't see Kamaru Usman complaining. I don't see Colby Covington complaining. Like, I don't see Dustin Poirier complaining. I don't see Conor McGregor complaining. Like, all the guys, I don't see Stylebender complaining. Did McGregor not beef with Dana over, like, letting him do the fight with Floyd and all Dana that? Dana promoted the fight with oh, okay. Floyd. It was okay. a co-promotion. Yeah, mm. okay. So Dana got bread off of that fight. Okay. So I just don't see the top guys mm -hmm. complaining. Mm-hmm. I think what it is is the guys who are outperforming their contracts. And I think that's how everybody kind of feels. Yeah. You know, I think like when we're doing, you know, you do comedy club for the first time that yeah. you sell out and you have your guaranteed contract, but you sold the place out. You're like, I need to get a little bit more money for yeah. this shit. Yeah. So sure. we, I get that feeling hundred percent, but what you got to do is understand next time you go to sign that contract. Yeah. You hit them I over the, the head. Leverage. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you're upset in the now. And I understand with the, a, a, a sport like fighting, which is like, in a lot of ways, contractually terrifying. You lose, you lose all that leverage, mm -hmm. or a lot of it. You lose a couple times in a row, you could be out the game. Yeah. So I understand, like, when you're popular, you want to capitalize on it fucking now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Jorge was going through with Dana. Remember when Jorge yeah. fought Kamaru on, like, short notice? He went yeah. out to, like, uh, Abu Dhabi or something like that. I remember yeah, yeah. in seven days, he, like, cut weight. Do you guys yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, but they got to pay me the right amount. Jorge was on a tear. Yeah. He knocked out Askren with the knee. He beat Darren Till. Like, he was beating all these guys. And I think Jorge understood. He's like, oh, shit. Like, I've, I'm, I'm a journeyman fighter. And now I have more hype than everybody. And fans want to fucking see me. You got to pay me now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when I'll be able to string together a number of victories yeah, that are going to make me this hyped. Especially before Kamaru. He's like, unbeatable. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, I got to go. And then to go five rounds with him? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, but I, and I understand the grievance right there because I, on some level he's going, buddy, when am I going to have this much right. hype right now? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mike Perry did the same thing. Like it was only after he had like two or three wins in a row that he was going in on fighter pay. Interesting. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Remember that last press conference that he had where he was just like going off like on air. I think, and then he said something about taxes. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually glad I made less because yeah, yeah, then I don't yeah. got to pay more in taxes or yeah, some yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah, he's a wild boy, that guy. Yeah. But yeah. So what do you think Jake's play is? I think he has to fight UFC guys or MMA guys because that's where he has a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And I think he needs a big marquee name. And I think if, if he can fight a Nate Diaz, if he can fight a Jorge Masvidal, if he can fight a Colby Covington, if he can fight one of these people that the MMA community is passionate about, yeah, then I think that we can see a big pay-per-view draw. Mm. But just Jake going to beat up a random person, I don't think people are paying money right. for it. And I think he knows that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's okay with the way that he positioned it. You know? Like, Logan is more of a face. People might pay to see Logan fight somebody. Mm-hmm. But Jake, he understands that he's there to troll. And, yeah. like, he, he'll wear two fucking watches at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Like, n so people go, look at this asshole wearing two watches. Yeah. yeah. But it's a comment. Yep. Yeah. You know? What do you think his his request to, to Dana? Like, the steroid stuff? Like... Oh, is he on roids? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because basically uh, Dana said... Yeah, like, I mean, like, look, here's the reality. If they're not testing for steroids and you're in a, comp a competitive sport, you're on steroids. Right. This is just as simple as that. Like, and if they are testing, you're still probably on steroids. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, 100%. All sports. And the, yeah, this is exactly. So it's like if there's a weightlifting competition and there's no testing for steroids, please believe everybody is getting every advantage right. they could possibly It's like take. taxes. It's like you're not going to lie. You're not going to cheat, but you're going to get as close as you as can. Close as close as can. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So, like, do I think that he's on steroids? I don't know. If I was in his situation, would I be on steroids? 100%. Mm. Yeah. I'm not doing this shit for the period of the game. Mm. He's not fighting other boxers. He's fighting UFC. He's doing this for entertainment. So get every advantage you possibly can have within the sport. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's not on roids, guess who else? Or so if he's potentially on roids, guess who else can potentially be? The people he's fighting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If he's not getting tested, they don't have to get tested. Right. So there's no advantage. Yeah. Mm. So Even I don't understand Steven. why this is a big deal. Like, if you're testing the opponent and then you're not testing him, then it's wrong. But if there's no mm. testing for everybody, mm. and Tyron Woodley's been in the UFC for fucking 15 years, so he's been UFC when people were on roids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Please believe. Yeah. There's no real advantage here. Right. Yeah. Huh. Also, the goalpost is being moved with Jake Paul. He's a fake fighter. He can't really fight. Now he can fight, and now oh, he's, he's an athlete. He's been an athlete his whole life. Have you seen people say that? Yeah. Like in high school, he was like a wrestler. Like, yeah, of course he's going to be good. It's like, all right. Everyone just keeps changing the goalposts over and over about. Because they, they don't want to admit that the kid can actually fucking box. Yeah. He can actually box a little. <clears throat> it's not the steroids. You could fill me up with steroids. You could fill Akash up with steroids, fill you up with steroids, fill you up with steroids. We can't go in there against UFC guys and fuck them up. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can speak for me. <laughs> um, well, what else Yo, we got, boys? Speaking of CT, you want to talk about uh, Antonio Brown? All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because we got to save you some more money. That's what the fuck we do. Okay, optimize your life by optimizing your bank account. We're going to do that with Honey. You know, today's episode is brought to you by Honey, matter of fact, because we all shop online and we've all seen the promo code have spaces on every single website, but sometimes we don't have that promo code. And we're like, what the hell is going on? Am I about to pay full price for something that I don't have to? Is there someone else on the internet that's about to pay less than me just because they have a promo code? If there was almost was only a service that could scour the internet for all the promo codes for what I might need, then I could save money on all these sites. Well, Akash, is there? Oh, there is. It's called Honey. Honey has got your back. Simple as that. It is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. Look at that. Saving money right there. I off use the it bat. all the time, dude. You check out, honey button drops down. All you do, click apply coupons. It mm -hmm. searches the entire internet, finds the best deal for you. I save money on tech shit all the time using it. See, this is beautiful. And you just use it as your as your browser. Yeah, just use it. Click apply coupons on the thing and it searches the whole internet. <sighs> Absolutely amazing. Okay. What you have to do is make sure you use Honey so you could save money and then you thank us later. Later, It's that serious. Honey has found over 17 million members 
and over $2 billion in savings for those members. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on the free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash flagrant. That's joinhoney.com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. Oh my God. What do you? What is your thought on that, Akash? His story is... The coach, Bruce Arians, tried to make him play with an injury. Like, he told him he was hurt, and Bruce Arians was like, no, go back out there. And he was like, I can't, I'm hurt. And then Bruce Arians said, if you don't go back out there, you're off the team. And so that's why he quit in the fashion in which he quit. What did he do? He, (laughs) Antonio Brown, uh, took off his jersey and shoulder pads mid-game on the sideline, walked to the locker room shirtless, and as he's in the end hyped zone, up just the crowd. hyped up the crowd, the Jets crowd, the away crowd. He's a buck, Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And then just basically quit the team. Fucking raising the one as he runs into the tunnel. It's a hilarious video. Hmm. And, and, but what's the deal? Like, if he's that injured, why the fuck can't he, uh, why can he? Why can he run and jump? That was my thought. If you're so hurt, you're raising your arms, you're running and jumping. Right. How hurt are you? Yeah, he didn't look that hurt. Yeah, so I don't know if that's his story. Tom Brady and Bruce Arians are apparently saying like, hey... Uh, he's off the team, but like, be kind to him, and he's not in like the best mental state. Like, just be kind to somebody. Yeah, I thought that was a good response. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it also completely like they can't say shit. What do you mean? But you're you're saying, hey, be nice to this guy. He's you know we don't know what his mental health struggles are, but you're calling the guy crazy. You're saying yeah. we, we had a fucking crazy person on our team in his house. Wasn't he living with Tom? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom had a crazy person in his Tom, house. Yeah, Tom, Tom will do perfect. anything to win. Son, he he really will. <laughs> he I heard his kids' lives at stake. <laughs> Son, I heard a crazy <laughs> person walking around the house shirtless. I heard the week leading up to the Super Bowl last year against Kansas City, he sent his entire family away and was just like, no, the house is mine. I'm studying film, a nonstop work. I gotta get better at this. Until we fucking... <laughs> I gotta get better at this. I've been negotiating film? with my wife. Nah, <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, I, Shorty, I got to be great. Like, beat it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I really got to be better at this, man. Here's two plane tickets. Go wherever you want. Go wherever you want. Take another guy. I don't give a fuck. No. <laughs> oh, 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 no. I'm not there yet. I just got married. Take another gay guy. I don't there give a fuck. There you go. <laughs> Take that. Another gay guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another one. Not yeah. me. Yeah, not me. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's just, ah, man. It's just weird that, it's, that. It's, uh, yeah, it's sad, but it's also, dude, Tom Brady's fucking perfect. He handles it all perfectly. Yeah. To say it like that and not be like, you know, he quit on the team. That's what the easy way to go. And then to say like, hey, let's just all be nice to him. And then they ended up winning the game, right? Yeah, they came on back. They were down 24-10 yeah. when he left, and they ended up winning 28-24 or 28-27, I believe. And wasn't it a game-winning drive with like under two minutes left? He I went like 93 so. yards? Yeah. Completely. Tom Brady to Tom Brady. Like his 68th yeah. game-winning drive in his career or some shit? Like something insane. 44 years old. It's almost like... It's almost like he needed a little bit of, uh, yeah, you know, a Michael little Jordan, something like, exciting. I need the adversity. Yeah, he needed I a little adversity. I need the flu. Someone coughed in my mouth. And yeah. they lost the yeah. game before and had like their second best receiver got injured. Their running, their starting running back got injured. Like mad people got hurt in the game before and they lost. And yeah. then they just, yeah, it's we're fine. It's 24 to 10, but it's the Jets. I've destroyed the Jets my whole career. Are you willing to admit he's greater than Jordan yet? No, he's not. <laughs> This guy doesn't know nothing. <laughs> he's, he's I, great, think, I, not. I think he's greater in every way. He's great. That's what I'm saying. He's greater in every Skin single way. Skin color. Yes, exactly. That's what <laughs> yeah. I mean. No, 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 he's like greater as like an athlete. I think he's a better leader. I think he's like a better person. Better human being for sure. Yeah. Better like, looking. But yeah. Jordan handsome, but Tom Brady handsome. I think Jordan probably got a better nah. body. Jordan got no, a better Jordan body. Jordan got a way better body. 100%. Yeah, better it's not body. even close. Cool. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Jordan's kind of... Jordan's <laughs> handsome. You don't think Jordan's handsome? I think Jordan's He definitely aged better. Not even a question if Brady aged better. Oh, yeah. Jordan looks like shit now. Yeah, but yeah, we'll yeah. see once he's Brady's retired. Yeah. You know, for, for four years, but or five years. Brady's going to be gorgeous forever, dog. Come yeah, on. Yeah, he might be. That motherfucker aging gracefully. Yeah. Jordan yeah. aging like shit. Do you think Antonio Brown has actual like mental health issues? He has CTE for you sure. Think? 1,000% CTE <laughs> is not even I mean, a that's, question. That's, I just attribute it all to And like, it was CTE. the hit on Von, by Vontez Burfecht in the playoff game. I remember watching that. Yeah. Dirty hit. Yeah. Dirty hit. And ever since then, no shit. The guy has not been the same mentally. But you think He's been one more of a problem. concussion can make that happen? I think if it's vicious enough. And if you watch the, the replay of this hit, this shit is filthy. That's the hit. No, it looks kind of crazy. He's down. Basically unconscious. Let's see the replay. So he goes up, misses it. Oof. Oh, yeah. He's a... What, 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 500 pounds of force? Look at this. I mean, what a piece of shit. 
Yeah, but also Roethlisberger with the, the hospital pass right there. Yeah, <laughs> hospital oh. pass. yeah, he hung him out to dry for sure. But that but straight honestly, to his head. Yeah, dude. And Ooh, you know what shoulder sucks? Shoulder straight to the head. If he had caught that pass, he'd be able to handle that hit. Yeah. But the fact that he didn't catch it. Well, it was I a bit he, too high, too. If it was a little it was lower. A, it was a bad pass, but yeah. like... If he had caught it, he'd at least brace for impact. Break. Yes. Yeah. But when you don't catch it, yeah, I don't like, ah, think... Play's done. Yeah. 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 Isn't that interesting? Okay. Oof. No, that was brutal. Yeah. And I truly don't think he's been the same since then. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think one head injury, like, can, especially because it's the one head injury compounded by all the other little hits. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's and then the he thing kept they're playing. saying with the NFL in general is like CTs, like... The, it's repetitive. like the, it's the chronic yeah. the micro yeah, the exactly. micro concussions or whatever they call them like the yeah. little hits but yeah, that's yeah, why they're yeah. worried about linemen the most because it's just a lot of little boom 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 yeah boom, but it's never linemen that are like killing their wives and shit like that or I like, think I think it is too really yeah there's at least linemen. they're just not famous or, enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the linemen should be the worst right because every single play you're doing yeah. a headbutt right yeah. whereas the linebacker how many tackles do you think you're getting a game oh linebackers have 100 tackles a year no problem and then you're getting in there every play. Like Junior Seau, one of the greatest linebackers ever, he died. I think he committed suicide and his family thought he had CTE. Mm-hmm. And he was a guy that, I mean, these are, you're fucking in there every play. Like the lineman hit every play too, yeah. but you're the next line of defense. And you're all over the field. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's probably just bigger impact too. Yeah, you're running full speed. They're running full speed. <sighs> Do you think Jeez. AB's meltdown affects the league? No, no. The league keeps going and it keeps growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I keep watching. I feel kind of guilty, but I'm not going to stop watching. That's what I'm saying. How many people like you are feeling a little like, eh, this is getting weird? No, yeah, I, I, I not I yet. of football weirdly. Not really? Yet. Yeah. I used yeah. to, like, as a kid, I knew every football player, Brett Favre's era. Like, I was into football. And then slowly over time, I was like, yo, I don't like watching people just app. Like, it's going to, someone's going to die on the field, and I just don't want to be a part of. Interesting. In a weird way. And is it because it, it's disingenuous? Like with boxing or like fight sports, you know what they're entering, and this feels like they're kind of being lied to. Well, the NFL hid it a long time, like yeah. cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. So if, if if NFL just came out and were like, "Yo, this shit is wild, dangerous, and you're most likely going to get CTE, and if you choose to do this, that's up to you." Yeah. Then maybe it would absolve the guilt a little bit. A little bit, but like they encourage kids to get into the game and all that shit. Like, yeah. Like I would never encourage my kid to get into like never. MMA. You yeah. know what I mean? I'd be like, you can learn how to like spar and shit. What about but, karate? Like, you probably want it, your kid to do some sort of self defense, right? Self defense is cool, but like, I don't want that get, I don't MMA, get in the a lot ring. of head trauma. Yeah, you don't want them sparring hard and getting cracked yeah. in the head at Twice eight years a Twice a week, old. every yeah. week. Do judo. Would you roll. let your kid play yeah. football? Yeah. Tackle football? Yeah. Yeah. Akash? Yeah. I mean, if he was an actual man, yeah. 16, <laughs> though. I, I say wait till like 16. Mark, 14, 15, no, maybe. I don't know. Nah, yeah. I don't. I really don't think playing fucking pee wee makes you a pro. Yeah, them kids don't hit each other hard, bro. Nah, they be hitting, no, they but hit. like, I don't think you actually yeah. develop as a player. Like, I don't think Ladanian <laughs> Tomlinson or whoever would be like, dude, if it wasn't for pee wee football, what I wouldn't Mark? have been here. What, what, what do you mean? They I, th- I think I'm the only person here who played tackle football. He played it. I think he played at a high level, right? Uh, yeah, Dove got beat up by some middle schoolers, and he's got a story. <laughs> oh, no, we played flag, but then when we started in high school, and you played against some of the schools in in L.A., you kn- like. You knew kids that played Pop Warner, and they hurt. it hurt. I oh, couldn't believe really? the hits that I took. I'm just like, I just did this to fucking wear the jersey at school, get the girls. My and you played defense. Like, yeah. Well, Safety? I tried wide receiver. I couldn't catch a ball for shit. Right. But they Makes didn't have sense. those gloves back then. And then I was yeah, actually. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the gloves. It was, it was yeah. definitely the gloves. Also, yeah, 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 they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back no. then. <laughs> yeah. Where the fuck are you going to high school? It was 90, you put with a leather helmet? No, yeah. they were like leather. About. There was some sticky. Guys would add it to Come there. on. Anyway. Did, did your nose stick out of the mask? <laughs> <laughs> I had the lineman one where it was like the bar across yeah, yeah, yeah. the face. Could you not play lineman because you just started trying to kiss the guys by putting your nose against their cheek? Just nuzzle? Do you think you have CTE? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I got concussion. Got With that How nose much? cheek move, that got to be CTE right there. 100%. Yeah, yeah that's uh, it, it hurt. And they said there, there's research, like an average number of concussions that leads to CTE is like 16 or 17. Like these guys have had that many and they don't report them. So, yeah. Motherfuckers. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to keep watching. Yeah, I don't yeah, hold but the I league responsible at all at this point. If they come out and say it, it's still not going to change anything. The players yeah. at this point no know what they're getting into. Playing. I feel yeah. so bad yeah. for people who didn't know what they were getting into, and the league isn't really taking care of retired players. Yeah. Like, they cut their benefits wherever they can. League is, a, it's like the most ruthless corporation. They make money. Everywhere. I think they're worried about sponsors. Cut costs everywhere. The word, I think the, uh, that's the big thing. Oh, you admit it, and then boom, the waterfalls. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's you, interesting. It's going to go down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Could you. Yeah, like, does that cancer sponsorship go? Yeah, because, like, UFC has amazing sponsors, and they're honest about what, what, the, they are. what they're doing. But 
even if you look at the sponsorship between like NFL and UFC, it's different. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, State Farm uh, is different. Insurance is going to sponsor CTE. <laughs> yeah, 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 Manscaped yeah. will. Yeah. 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 A little Girl. different ad budget. Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. Is, is NFL the most profitable league in the world? It is. Well, uh, for sure in America. Yeah. I think in the, the most valuable team is the Cowboys. Yeah. Over like Man City and all Man United, all that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. According and to you got to look at the schedule too. It's like they play... 17 games a year now? Yeah, 17. Compare that to what do soccer teams play? More than 17. Right? Yeah, way more. So it's like baseball is 162. Basketball is 82. Yeah. Like you're doing a fraction of the games and you're still making more money. Dude, they did Christmas Day ratings numbers. And I wish I remembered, but I want to say... And the NFL is not a Christmas day. They never promote Christmas. Thanksgiving is their day. The NBA tried to take Christmas. This year, they had two football games. They got like 29 million viewers each. And then the highest rated basketball game was something like 12 million. Yeah. Those Jeez. numbers aren't exactly wow. something yeah. like that. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. They don't even, we're not even trying. We're dominating. Yeah. It's a more enjoyable sport to watch on TV. The excitement is And just, with yeah. groups and barbecues. You don't yeah. do barbecues for basketball games. Unless yeah. It's like a finals. It's got to be playoffs team. or finals. You don't tailgate yeah. for basketball. Like a, a football game that's reasonably close is an awesome game to watch. Because of how they've curated the watching experience from home, they yeah. actually haven't done a good job live. No, football live kind of stinks. I'll be if honest. If you don't with have you. great like, seats, it sucks. And if you don't have a like a real like stake in one of the teams, yeah. like just being a casual at a football game, it's like if the weather stinks, you're kind of cold. You you can't see the um. The, you can't see the movement of the ball. Like yeah. a four yard run on TV looks okay. Oh yeah. From the back corner, you can't see depth. No. Like, it doesn't mean anything for yeah. you. Especially right? if it's like a running play or like a trick play. Like, I don't even know. Yeah. What, what is this? Yeah. Uh, interesting perspective, though. When we were at the Celtics game, we got to go. Shouts to Randy again. But we got to go see, uh, sit in the, um, the, in the suite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were in the center suite. Mm-hmm. Meaning like we were right in the center. And we could see both benches as well. It's probably like, the best fucking suite in, in the house. And you'd think a suite you'd be kind of far away from the action and it wouldn't be as enjoyable to watch. I looked at the the Jumbotron less. Mm-hmm. The suite level, to me, was the exact level that the cameras are for when you watch the game at home. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, and since you're center, you're watching the action like evenly. Yeah. It was fucking perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, but I think that's what, the NFL has created. Oh, yeah. Like, at home, you really feel like this intimate oh, people shot. people don't like going to games. I think the second time in history, the as of earlier this year, away teams had a winning record against home teams. Because hmm. their home field advantage doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, like, the only thing it does is refs are still more inclined to give you calls. But, like, yeah. Dude, Cowboys games, it, it's not that loud because the hardcore fans are like, I, I can still just watch. Yeah, like, yeah It's yeah. way too fucking expensive. Mm. They got these personal seat licenses that cost crazy money. Yeah. You have to pay every single year, no matter what. And it's just not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's, yeah. I, I would rather watch at home. It they got the commentary great. down. They got the replay down. Everything. They got, yeah, they just figured it out. And basketball, it's... Uh, I don't know, man. The energy is just not there. I think what kills basketball the most, and I love basketball live, but football live has this a bit, but basketball, the end of the game bogs down so much. We're fouling oh, all the time. So I love many basketball timeouts. live. I was saying basketball on TV. On stinks. TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, the last yeah. 30 seconds of a game takes 12 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, for some think, reason, yeah. I think it's just because it is so few games, it makes it more of an event that also, when there is a game. That also is That's a also true. Every game it, matters. Yeah. Yeah. Every game matters. It's like but the playoffs the whole season. That's yeah, true. no, that's true. That's true. And the players know that, so they're yeah. not half-assing it. Yeah. Like, you could tell when the players step it up in basketball. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, the defense is getting real. People diving for balls yeah. and shit. But game 73, is 37-year-old LeBron really going to kill yeah. himself in yeah. game no 73? Chance. Like, halfway through the season, all of a sudden, Kyrie, uh, maybe I might play away games now. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. they're yeah. just... <laughs> they're coasting. Yeah, they're coasting 100%. All right, um, guys... I think that we have to get into our conspiracy bag right here. Mm. Uh, we've got some big things going on. Uh, we have Ghislaine Maxwell. Yep. Um, is guilty on five of six accounts. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do we think that people will feel satisfied by this decision? Mm. 
Kind of, sort of, I think. Okay. I Go. think people will be satisfied that like there is like some semblance of justice, that it's yeah. not just like covered up, oh, Epstein killed himself, that kind of shit. Yeah. But ultimately, and I think you were mentioning this yesterday, Ghislaine isn't the person that people want to see, even if she is the ringleader, the head of the whole thing, the most responsible. Yeah. They want to see the people that are related and around the case. Yeah. I, that's what I fear about this right now is like, there's a very good chance that they didn't really have any good intelligence or like proof of kid fucking from all these uh, elites and politicians that mm -hmm. were on the island or on the plane. Right. There's a very good chance. Right. Yeah. We've all... I've, I think like gone down the rabbit hole and started to believe that they did. And they got these tapes and they have this advanced recording system. It is America uh, it is upper upper yeah. east side apartment. And then the Island, they recorded everything and there's a kill switch in case someone dies. And then, and like, I think we all started to believe it because we wanted the, the other bad guys. Like we wanted the Clintons and we wanted the uh, Bill Gates and we wanted uh, who else is on there. Uh, who else has been uh, Dershowitz, I mean, Prince Trump Andrew, and Dershowitz uh, and uh, Alan Dershowitz? Like we wanted these guys that we already didn't like yeah. because of their fucked up actions and behaviors. We wanted them to go down and we're like, oh, here's a tool for you guys to go down. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we have this tool. This tool for you guys to go down is Ghislaine Maxwell and uh, Jeffrey Epstein mm -hmm. and their child sex ring that they took part in. Right. So. I think a lot of people acted like they cared so much about pedophilia when really they're just using the child sex ring to take down their bad guys, right. which is ironically the same thing that Epstein and Ghislaine were doing yeah. is using <laughs> child sex trafficking yeah. to take down their enemies. Right. Right. Or to, uh, what is it? A uh, flip or get the loyalty of right. uh, certain people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that they could control certain people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking like, I think the average person, if you ask them, can you name two people that Epstein or Ghislaine touched or diddled or sold into sex trafficking? I don't think they'd be able no to. No chance. I can't. And there was a whole documentary. And I can't either. I know Virginia Gouffre, and then it stops right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't really care that much about the victims if we don't even know who the victims are. Right? Yeah. Selfishly, maybe we care more about the people that we kind of don't like getting punished, and this is the method of punishment. Maybe we just selfishly want what we feel like is justice. We feel like... We feel like it's just okay. We feel like powerful people get away with everything. Yeah. We don't get away with shit. Yeah. We lie on our taxes. The fucking government throws us in jail. They lie on their taxes. Who they cares? do whatever they want. Yeah, they don't yeah. pay taxes. Jeff Bezos don't ever have to pay anything. Yeah. So you want some form of justice, and especially if they're doing something this vile. Yeah. I want justice. Yeah. So this excites us because it might bring justice. But if this is where it stops, we'll forget about it. Yeah. But it's not satisfying. I, I wonder if like we even get confused with the word justice, right? Because like. I don't think that humans have ever wanted justice in terms of like the justice system. Like somebody kills your daughter and then they go to jail for life. I don't think you feel okay with that. Uh, I, that is justice in terms of the justice system, but real justice is some Hammurabi's code shit. Yeah. Real justice. Like you vengeance. kill my daughter. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, you're lucky. I don't kill your daughter. So you yeah. know what it feels like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that human beings get caught up in this concept of like, let's call it instead of justice, like, even because that's where our emotional feelings are. Like right. that's that was the fucking OJ shit. Like the OJ thing was people wanted OJ to get off, not because they liked OJ, but because they were like, why people be getting off? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't know Ron or Nicole. Hmm. Serial killers or terrorists, we want them to get put behind bars because they could affect our lives still. Right. OJ was upset someone was smashing his wife. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna come kill my wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's done killing. Right. Right? Like it He's a monster affect. to one person. Huh? Now two people. He was a monster to one person, then a second person. Yes. That's but, not but it's not gonna kill a monster to any all? random person. Exactly. I'm any random person. I'm not a wife. I'm not a guy fucking a wife. I'm a yeah. random person. That's what serial killers going after. Lock that guy up so I feel safe. Exactly. So it's just like, let's have it just kind of be, even. it's the same, it, it's the Kyle Rittenhouse shit. It was like, it's, how do we make this even? If this was a black kid, he would have been shot or yeah. he would have been put in jail for what he did. What would be even is if he got shot or put in jail. Yeah. That would be even, right? Like mm. it's people, it's people trying to like write the scale instead of going to like what the justice system requires. Right. That's kind of what I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you, but I do think that there is a, f a sense of justice when someone goes away to jail, even if it's even if like they committed murder, yeah. and we don't kill yeah. them because it's like if um, what's the dude who stepped on 
uh, put his knee to George Floyd. Uh, Derek Chauvin. If, if yeah, Chauvin, Chauvin didn't yeah. go to jail, that's no justice. You're right. I feel there was justice that his life got taken away from him, like in terms of career, everything, and he's going to jail for a long time. You're right. Yeah. And, I wouldn't yeah. want to see him killed. Yeah, it's it's not, uh, it's, uh, to use a shitty uh, example, black or white. Like, it, it's not black or white. Yeah. It, it, there is a semblance of justice or or getting even in seeing someone convicted. There's no question. Like, um, yeah, like that's a perfect example. Or even like one of these like scumbag businessmen or like a pharmaceutical guy like ends up going away for yeah. a long time because he was, you know, pumping a bad drug. Yeah. You're like, I, I feel like there's a little bit of, of justice here, especially from us on the outside. You know, but I imagine George Floyd's family is like, kill that motherfucker. Uh, so like, justice like, maybe is more emotional vindication. Like, yeah. I feel vindicated that you went to jail for what you did. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't have to be even, but you need to fucking go to jail for what you did. That's fucking yeah. crazy. There's also a difference between like placating the society and the people that were like directly agree. Affected. For them, yeah. emotional vindication is kill that motherfucker. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? But then you... should those people be the ones that write laws for what justice is? You know what I mean? Like, because no. obviously the person yeah. that's aggrieved is going to be the most, the most emotional about it and they're yes. going to want the biggest punishment. Yes, yeah. yes, But is yes. that going to be the thing that actually like satisfies society? And what allows society to function in the most normal and safe way. Yeah. Because if we just start chopping off legs because somebody, you know, hit you in a car and you had to get your leg chopped off, shit could get wild out here. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, there's a reason probably why they moved away from the Hammurabi's code shit. Yeah. yeah. It, it is interesting. I just one what happens to the people that have the bloodlust for Ghislaine and Epstein like, what happens when they find out that that bloodlust was really for the elites? Mm -hmm. Or do you think they've already understood that and reconciled that? And they knew that they were, like, kind of being phony and caring about these uh, women or, or young girls who are child sex trafficked? Mm. I, I think it's kind of both. Like, yeah, that's what I would yeah. say. It's just because you don't necessarily both. know the victim or, like, identify with them, I don't know if that necessarily means you don't care about them or like the justice system operating on a functional level right you know right. what i mean like if i see a random dude get punched in times square like i don't know that guy and also don't really like care about him right but the guy that punched him i'm like i hope like something bad happens to him yeah that's just like i don't want him to just be walking around yeah partially for fear that someone could just punch me but like that fear could also play in with kids random kids getting scooped up and taken to an hell island yeah. yeah i got kids but if it's not him that you know gets arrested like the fact that you could just do that to someone and nothing happens to you that's terrifying that affects everything yeah yeah, it's unsettling. Yeah, yeah. Like, what society do we live in where somebody can, you know, mm. traffic children and then nothing happens? To yeah, them? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so many people have kids. Like, the majority of people have kids. So and then the powers that be, even if they're involved in it, have mm -hmm. a responsibility <coughs> to, like, maintain the calm of society. Mm -hmm. So let's say that there's the powers that be. Let's just say the conspiracies are tr true and the upper echelon of society was, you know, uh, orchestrating this ring so that they could, uh, you know, get information on these certain people and then manipulate them to their will, right? Let's say. But once you start to see people go, yo, we're not cool with you guys letting child fuckers off. Yeah. And there's enough unrest within society. You got to either kill Epstein or you got to lock up Ghislaine mm -hmm. just so we're all calm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're yeah. going to start acting wild out here if yeah. you're just letting people fuck kids and get away with it. Yeah. 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 That's what I was going to say. It's like, I think if she got off, you would have saw how much people care. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see, yeah. Like, there'd be protests. Yeah. Like, there'd be a whole. It, thing. It, this shit would have went off if she got off. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that she was guilty on basically everything, it's like, all right, finally, what we thought was going to happen happened. And I think people care a little bit less. Mind you, they're both disgusting. It's a little yep. less icky when it's a woman with yo, your little girls. It's hmm. it, yo, it is true. It is it's true. A little less icky. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. I, and I wonder if women also feel that. I think so. Mm -hmm. Like you think girls are also like it's a little bit less. <clears throat> yeah. Also, I, we don't know as much about Ghislaine and what she did versus with Epstein. Right. Like we right. know Epstein was like, yo, fucking. Jerk me, jerk off. me off. Like, I'm yeah. going to have sex with you, all that shit. Yeah. And yeah, I think the, that point's true. Like, it's psychologically way weirder when it's a guy. Yeah. It's yeah. more disturbing. It's more gross. It's more vile. Yeah. yeah. When it's a girl, yeah. it's fucked. And even though I feel she might have been worse. Yeah. She was the one grooming them, getting them comfortable. Logically, enough yes. To bring to but it doesn't thing, that's like, hit you here the yeah, same. No. Yeah. 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 So then her brother comes out and says she's not going to reveal any of the details of those involved in the sex trafficking network in exchange for like a plea deal or a more lenient sentence. This just happened? This is yeah, like over the weekend. That, yeah, a couple okay. Times. Yeah. Wow. So he comes out and says that. So now people are speculating like, okay, is he saying that? So first off, she didn't say anything beforehand because my understanding is that if she says, I'm innocent, I had nothing to do with this, I was a victim, 
but here's who actually did it, that it could potentially implicate her more directly in the crimes. That, oh, you knew about all this and didn't say anything earlier, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that she was maintaining her, her innocence. She's like, I'm time. totally, ah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So you're saying she's saying I'm totally innocent. I had nothing so to do she with this. can't have information victim. since yeah. she's totally innocent. Uh, Once she gives information, she's an accessory to the crime. Then she can be convicted on, yeah, even just accessory, shit like that. Yeah. Where she was trying to get nothing. And then now that she has all these charges, oh, thank right you. before sentencing, it's like, okay, does she come out and now rat on people? Her brother's saying no. And people are assuming like if Epstein got killed, she could easily get killed. Okay, here we go. Okay, because this is what I didn't understand. I was asking you guys on the phone yesterday. I was like, why didn't she squeal? She has all the leverage to get the deal before she's convicted. Mm -hmm. Now that she's convicted, she got no leverage. That's mm -hmm. if they have an amazing case against you. Like if you are like in a gang and they find you with like weapons and they like can place you out of murder, then it's in your best interest to be like, all right, all right yeah, give me like, the plea. I yeah. did this shit, but like, and I know they're going to get me because they got all this evidence. Yeah. I'm assuming that her legal team was like, they don't have enough evidence on you. Oh, so they thought that they had a shot of yeah. beating it. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, keep your mouth shut until it happens. And then right before sentencing, if you're going to do something, do it then. We got the plea in the back pocket. Uh, yeah. So now what they're going to do is go back and they're going to say, listen, we got all these fucking people. Yeah, I was involved. You were right. You got me. Boom. But I'm going to drop dime on all these motherfuckers. So now they're reaching out to the powers that be and they're saying, hey, how sweet a deal can you get me before everybody knows you fuck children? That's if she wants to put her life at risk. Because if Epstein got killed, she can get killed. Yeah. But yeah. don't you think they're going to kill this bitch regardless now? Nah. If the brother's coming out immediately saying, hey, she's not going to tell. I'm so I letting it's, everybody it's know a, it's a chance she's, she's not going to tell. Her. Oh, so she's putting out the... The smoke signal, Don't like, yo, yo, yo we, you're time. good, yeah, you're yeah. safe. And not only should you not kill me, get me out of here. Like, I'm going to get 20 years, but you're tight with the DA or whatever. Like, get me out on good behavior in 10. Eight. <sighs> and we don't even got to make a big thing of it. Give me the fucking 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll be out in 10. Some people will talk about it, but by then there'll be other shit going Moved on. on. Let uh, me live. Oh, shit. Yeah. I think her hardest decision was not naming names beforehand because, like you said, she had the most leverage. She could have probably worked the deal out where she could have got immunity, even if she's admitting to being an accomplice yeah. to it. She could have got immunity. They still killed mm -hmm. her, though. But they would have probably killed her being outside. Now she has to be look over her shoulder for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. So she's like, hey, I'll just take these years. I'll do the time. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And then you guys make sure you get me out a little bit earlier. And and I know we've spoken about it before, but a lot of people believe that her father, who was a spy for I think the Israeli I'm sorry. government, was uh, <laughs> they thought he was Mossad, yeah. Mossad, right? Yeah. And uh, was killed. They say was yeah, killed. He, he fell, fell off, off a boat, boat or something like yeah. that. So she knows it could happen. But her boy, her husband, Jeffrey Epstein, like yeah, in he, jail, gets killed. I don't know if he was killed, Mark. I think he committed suicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He fell on a suicide boat. watch. Dangerous oh, to boat. make these claims, Mark. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> what evidence do you have to back that, dude? Yeah, that's a good point. Damn. Sleeping dude. guards. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh, so the thing that I'm also curious about with her is if, because people speculate that she and Epstein were working for a government. So, like, working with Saudis, working with Mossad, working for the US government. Yeah. Like, was it just him as, like, a standalone operator trying to, like, gain money and influence? Or yeah. was he working in conjunction with, like, a bigger institution? Interesting. And if she goes out and, and rats and is like, yo, the Saudis put me up to it. Ooh. Like, because Epstein apparently had, like, a fake Saudi passport, like, in his house or whatever. So if all of a sudden she says that, like, does that create bigger geopolitical Global issues? Tension. Where it's like, yeah, we got to go to war. Well, we that's the thing why you might need to keep that shit in the tuck. Because it might be better globally for us so that's where the government's got to go yeah do we like do we push her to squeal and then it, that potentially makes us look like fucking idiots that we got had by all these other all these fucking, governments yeah or do we just say it was just her and epstein keep it quiet and then try to give her a, a deal later that's the um that's the thing with uh jfk's murder or assassination like some people believe there was the russians mm -hmm. and yeah. it's better for our history that wasn't Russia elections. didn't yeah. kill a president. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people say Trump got elected because of Russian interference. Right. And it's like, even if they were buying Facebook ads or whatever, yeah, which yeah. I think is like completely possible. Yeah. People are saying like, yeah, we just got to say no. It was it's better for our history yeah. that that didn't happen. Because yeah. we can't make it look like these other countries are one, killing a head of state. Like that's, you got to go to war for that. Yeah. yeah. Like that is war guaranteed. And we have nukes and they have nukes. So it's going to get messy. Yeah. So that's why you've got to keep it quiet. So if they find out it's Saudi or they find out it's Israeli, 
then we have to have like back channel conversations. Maybe it's Russian, whatever. Who the fuck knows? We look like, weak just getting oil, getting trade deals, getting all that shit. Interesting. Maybe it's China. Who fucking knows? Yeah. But we got to find that out under the table for our respect globally. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And if people believe that all these U.S. officials are compromised... Like, how can you operate in good faith with all these other governments being like, yeah, we're sending Hillary Clinton to go do this deal. Like, what do they have on her? Right. Yeah. Like, can she even negotiate with the head of Russia? Yeah, can she even she negotiate could. with any of these countries? Mm. Interesting. I mean, who's even looking into this? How do we know that the people looking into this aren't is equally corrupted? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, this is messy and sad. When, when you think about just like, it's just sad. The whole thing is just sad. Yeah. The action is sad. The fact there's not going to be any real, like, stop to it of justice, probably. That's sad. It's just a sad fucking thing. Mm. It feels a bit hopeless. Yeah. Her husband like just dumped just her. Not. Really? Yeah, yeah, Maxwell had a husband, and she just he just left her. Just Canada. now? Just now. Yeah. For, like, the Pilates instructor or something? Yeah, yeah for a yoga, yoga, yoga teacher. Yoga teacher yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's a win. Yeah. That's a win, bro. That's a win, dog. I mean, he stayed with her through this whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. He must have believed her. Yeah. Or thought that he would, she would kill his ass. <laughs> Why yeah. she kill him? Well, she's about to be free. Yeah. Like if he got off, now he could leave you for the Pilates instructor because you can't do nothing. You locked up, bitch. Right? Like, yeah. What you going to do about it? You got bigger problems now, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> Figure your shit out. Yeah. Damn. He did it over the phone, too. Well, I mean. How you can't go there? Yeah. Like, come on. That's a legend face right face there. behind the glass. Yeah. Even if it's face to face, it's over a phone. <sighs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah, man, fuck all fuck. that. I'm doing this shit from home, dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Remote. Yeah, fuck all that. That breaking up in person shit for who? Why are we been wasting both of our times? Son, I could write you a letter, bitch. It's <laughs> lucky I called you. Yeah, it don't make it any better. No girl's more happy because you did it in person. <laughs> that shit is like press one for this collect call. Yeah, for it. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, we're officially back. Uh, thank y'all so much for tuning in, man. We hope you enjoyed the content we left y'all with during the break. Uh, remember that. We ain't leave y'all stranded. We made sure we put the work in to give y'all some good-ass motherfucking content while we were gone because we appreciate y'all. And please believe we were busy. You know, Akash was busy trying to contract COVID in whatever way he could possibly do to destroy <laughs> the thing that's most important to me, my wedding. <laughs> um, I was trying to plan a wedding. And by that, while I having mean, COVID, that's pretty crazy. While having COVID, which I didn't have, I definitely did not have. Uh, I won't ever have it again, matter of fact, because I won't be getting tested ever again. <laughs> and now you know that for a fact. So uh, uh, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And uh, we're very excited for this new year. Some big, exciting things that we get to announce uh, ideally soon. So make sure you go subscribe to Akash's YouTube channel so you don't miss that drop. And make sure you blow that fucking special up. Akash in comedy. And make sure that you keep spreading the word about this amazing podcast. We'll see you on Patreon on Friday. Patreon.com slash flagrant2. Thank you so much. Peace.